Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. Spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David
David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Okay, so let's send the challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. I kept Chessable a secret for three years at least, uh, and I was using it for myself. And I, you know, maybe never expected how, how big it would become. I have always been into games, and uh, I think games are fun ways to, to pass your time. Um, sometimes they can be educational as well, but I think chess is the perfect game that, that has it all. It's a game that not only entertains you, but also teaches you about life skills, from things like time management to the consequences of your moves or your actions. You know, once you make a move, you cannot take it back. I really fell in love with the game. And of course, given my competitive nature, I wanted to get better at it. And I found it extremely difficult after watching countless videos and reading some books. You would um, put, in, put in all that effort, and then when you get to the board, it's like, it all disappeared, it all vanished, and you performed at the exact same level you were before that. And uh, I looked around for a solution that could perhaps use the latest technology, the la latest learning science um, out there uh, to help you learn chess, and there was, there was nothing. So that's how the, the idea was born. I've been building things since I was 14, and I always enjoy bringing a community together around a product. And yeah, I mean, we got a lot of energy from the chess community as well. Uh, really from, from day one, when we announced Chessable, there was thousands of people who, who thought this was a good idea that had to be realized. And they've been fantastic with words of encouragement, support, advice, ideas on how to improve the product. And I believe they've been listened to over these years and Chessable is exactly what that initial community wanted. And it's part of our product process to actually keep listening to them going forward into the next years. Chessable is definitely a product that was built by players, for players. I think we have stuck to that vision and it continues to be exactly the same. What has changed is we now have a lot more great people in chess helping us realize this. You know, when I started, it was John and I, there was two of us, and then at some point we had three or four people. We had a small community around it. But now 
there is really an incredible amount of people that I never imagined all pulling in the same direction. So the, the future is bright. It really excites me what we can achieve together. And I, I just look forward to it. It's been absolutely incredible to see the reception by some of the top grandmasters in the world, um, like Grandmaster Anish Giri and Erwin Olami. And this sort of validation across the spectrum of players is fantastic and it's really what keeps the entire team going. So, fabulous. Hi, my name is David Sinemaza Kramali. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Chessable and the chief operating officer of the Play Magnus Group. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision-making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with AirThings. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights 
from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of Welcome to the second event in the Champions Chess Tour. This online series of tournaments organized by the Play Magnus Group. And this is the Charity Cup. And this is a really special event. The Play Magnus Group have partnered with UNICEF to donate to, well, the children of Ukraine. So this event takes place, of course, under the shadow of a war that's affecting millions, including many members of the chess community. And the Play Magnus Group has decided to, to use this event to raise money for UNICEF. And, well, I'm delighted to be a part of that. It's a privilege to be a commentator. Um, commentating, of course, with Peter Lecco. As many of you uh, will know, Peter, of course, has been a, a, well, a stalwart of the commentary team with Tanya over the past uh, year or so. Uh, more than that. Um, but Tanya can't make it, so I'm filling in. Um, but yeah, it's a privilege to be involved with this Charity Cup. As I'm sure you know, UNICEF is the United Nations Children's Fund. Um, so we're going to ask if uh, you're entertained by this event, then if you would like to donate to UNICEF uh, to help support the work of the United Nations and UNICEF in particular in Ukraine, then uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. I've donated um, and you can use the link on screen to donate to UNICEF. I mean, just speaking personally, over the past few weeks, um, I felt sort of, well, a whole range of emotions uh, since the invasion of the Ukraine. Um, I felt well overwhelmed and helpless, uh, but, Thankfully, you know, with this, I, I can do do a bit to, to help. Um, so, yeah, please do check out the link, uh, chess24.com slash donate, and you can donate to UNICEF and help children of Ukraine. And, well, if nothing else, you know, perhaps we can to help, help uh, entertain you and distract you from world events. Uh, because this is an absolutely fantastic event here, uh, this second online tournament in the, the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour. And what a, a really interesting uh, selection of players we have. Some of the strongest players in the world, of course, including world champion Magnus Carlsen. Uh, but we have plenty of players from the younger generation. Uh, let me just read out the list of 16 players very, very quickly. So Ding Liren, Richard Rapport, Vidit Gujarati, Pantala Hari Krishna, Jordan van Forest, uh, Liam, Liam Kwang Lei, David Navara, David Anton, Young Christoph Duda, Garwin Jones, Hans Niemann, Ramesh Babu Pragyan Ananda, Eric Hansen, Ju Wenjun, and Lei Teng Jie. So Lots of young players there. You know, Prague is, he's just 16 years old. Hans Niemann, 18 years old. Uh, I'm delighted to see Garwin Jones from England, a really exciting player. Um, and well, as we as we saw in the first of the Meltwater Champion Chess Tour events, Magnus Carlsen will not have it all his own way. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he got tripped up a few times. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he gets on in this second event. So I wonder if Peter is there. I'd like to get his take on, uh, well, what happened in that first Air Things Masters. There's Peter. Fantastic. Um, Peter, nice to see you. How are you? Yeah. Hello, Danny. Hello, everyone. Yes, uh, very good. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this uh, very special charity cup, a very special event of the Champions Chess Tour. 
uh well i mean the the first event was very dramatic because the, we we all started with this new scoring system with the three points uh, for a victory uh basically the slogan is like uh, every move matters yeah it's it's really very very dramatic very dynamic also yeah because uh with, with the win you can actually jump you you can catch up you can increase your lead you can fall back with the loss draws are not as much worth as as usually yeah, it's only one point for a draw so the whole system is is very very dynamic very entertaining well uh, i have to say i i mean you know of course i i was spectating and I thought it was fantastic. I thought the system worked incredibly well in the preliminary all play all stage uh, where there was so much fighting chess. And actually, we didn't have a repeat of these uh, quick draws that unfortunately marred some of the, the uh, tour last year. So it seems to be working extremely well. Yes, it's also, of course, uh, I think very important to note the, the mixed field. Yeah, this composition of a mixed field, it adds yes. uh, to the thrill because, of course, yeah, if if the top guys are playing all the times against each other, it's not just that, you know, they want to make a draw, but sometimes, uh, okay, it's very tempting. Yeah, but in, in a mixed field, it just doesn't work at all. Yeah, because uh, you, you might lose the rhythm. Yeah, it's uh, also one very interesting thing was that uh, the tournament started with Magnus Carlsen against and uh, against Artemiev, it was the first round and Artemiev lost the first game to Magnus mm. and uh, then he drew a couple of games but actually he was playing well and afterwards you know when suddenly on day two he started winning then we said like wow suddenly Vladislav is playing good but actually it was very tricky simply that this one loss to Magnus uh, offset him completely on the first day and he needed to find his rhythm his uh, his self inner balance yeah to be able to show his best and once you start winning, yeah, I think for, for also the outsiders, because we are seeing that we have some favorites, big names, some uh, names who, who we can't, can't really know exactly what to expect from them, if they get a good start. And this is what happened to Eric Hansen in the last event, yeah, that he started wonderfully, he got a lot of confidence, and then he actually managed to qualify from this in, insane uh, group of players. Yeah, so the start I mean, is he, very important. He was, uh, I think, a real kind of breakout star actually in the, in that first event. I, I was really impressed by his play. But I think you know what's interesting is that although his rating is a fair bit below a lot of the other players, in fact, he has had so much experience with playing online over the past couple of years that actually, in some ways, it didn't surprise me because. You know, online chess is a very different beast to uh, other events. So I would say that, you know, his online rating is actually, well, let, let's just say he it, it was a fair reflection. Um, so very interesting to see him again. And of course, well, we have so many exciting players. Um, I'm very interested to see how Garwin Jones gets on. He's, of course, my compatriot. Um, I know him pretty well. And, you know, he's a very dangerous player with the initiative. So that he's one to watch out for as well. Is there any other player that, you know, you would pick out particularly who you're interested in, in, in watching, Peter? Yes, absolutely. I mean, OK, we have uh, finally, I mean, really finally, he is making his debut. Uh, my countryman, uh, Rapport Richard. It's, uh, it's very nice to see him and he's also doing fantastically Lately, I mean, the Grand Prix series, he just managed to win the, the Belgrade stage. Yeah, and, and he had a semi-final stage in the very first event in Berlin. So he's leading the combined standing of the Grand Prix series with very, very good chances of qualifying for uh, the candidates tournament. And I can tell that, you know, the Hungarian chess fans had been waiting for this moment to, to see uh, Richard uh, play against... Uh, well, I mean, uh, not to play against the strongest because, of course, he's constantly playing, but to debut here in the tour and to see also what he's capable in, you know, in this online event. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I fully agree with that. You know, I'm really excited to see Richard playing here. And I mean, you must, as, as a compatriot of yours, I mean, you must know Richard pretty well. Yes, but uh, he, he lives in Belgrade. Yeah, so yes. it, it's also something, you know, that was very, very interesting that Usually, I know that for chess players, it's always very, very difficult to play well at, uh, at home soil. And basically, Belgrade uh, Grand Prix was a home, home turf for him. Mm. And that he won it. 
Uh, I sent him a message. I, I hope that he will be able to join us, but I told him absolutely no pressure. I mean, we would be very, very happy to see him any day if he feels the energy all the time or, or if he feels like uh, talking to us. And I think all the chess world would be also very happy to have him in, in our broadcast uh, once the, the day ends. Definitely. I mean, as you say, his results have been superb recently. Um, but it's the style of his chess, which is so unusual, at least to my eyes, very unusual. I mean, some of his opening ideas, very original. He's, he's certainly not a, afraid to take risks. And, and well, we saw in, in the final um, against um, Andrekin, it was extraordinary, this, this final game, how he, he, he played for a win in, in a situation where I think many other players would have taken a threefold repetition, um, but he really risked risked all actually, and, and uh, particularly when he was so short of time, I thought that was um, a remarkable win actually. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was a, that was a very dramatic moment, but I also feel like you know the reason why he's doing so well is that he he matured. Uh, he has always been known to be very creative, uh, so on, but. Now he, I think he finds a very nice balance between, you know, being conservative, knowing when exactly to take risk, when to settle for, I mean, what really modern top chess is about. Yeah, I have the feeling that he, he got a perfect match and also still he's a little bit unknown to his, his players. Yeah, he haven't been there for the last five years in all these top events. Yeah, so he haven't played hundreds of games against the top guys. And they still don't feel him so well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. there is some kind of a magic around the, which are at the moment, and I think he's also using it very, very nicely. So it's a very nice combination. Yeah, and now, of course, now of course, the big question is after having so much successes in a row, how much energy, how motivated, how concentrated he can be for this event? Because it's as you mentioned, yeah, this online chess is is something different. Yeah, uh, it's curious when you say, uh, you know, over the past five years, he hasn't uh, actually played a lot of the top. I mean, obviously he's played them, but he's he's still somewhat unknown. And yet he's actually in the top 10 in the world. And that's so I think that shows the kind of, well, rapid rise he's had in the chess world. I mean, that that's pretty extraordinary because, you know, a lot of these guys, they've played each other dozens of times. Yeah, of course. I mean, also the, the, those events usually are a little bit closed. Yeah, it's you. You have to be like in the top ten in mm. order to be able to constantly play in on this level, like in this kind of tournaments. And uh, we have seen him that he had sometimes, you know, this period when he had big successes. His rating jumped, but it was not exactly consistent. Yeah, and since like one one year more or less, he is playing on a very high level constantly and. He gets all the invitations and he has the chance to prove himself. At this moment, I mean, I know Hungarian chess fans are now extremely happy yeah, that there is suddenly, finally, someone to root for in these big events. And also the, the, the newspaper started to cover it. Yeah? So now we have, again, everyday uh, coverage of, of the top tournaments when uh, Rapport is playing. Okay, good stuff. Well, the games are, I think, about to start. Where I think, with there we go. We have kicked off. We're slightly late. So, um, if if you're just joining us, welcome everyone to the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour Charity Cup. This is a really special event. The Play Magnus Group has combined with UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, and uh, viewers, you will be able to donate to uh, UNICEF, which is helping children in Ukraine. So please do consider that if you feel like you're entertained. Um, so let's, Peter, let's start, of course, with the world champion Magnus Carlsen, and he's playing white against Jan Krzysztof Duda, which actually is an extraordinary clash for round one. Yes, I mean, Duda is a lead late replacement of uh, Radek Wojtasek. Yeah, I mean, Radek was uh, supposed to play, but uh, due to COVID illness, I, I think he finally yep. had to withdraw and uh, Jan Sistov jumped in. And uh, yeah, we have this incredible clash. Yeah, Jan Sistov is also already guaranteed his spot in the candidates tournament. 
uh, one of the members of the Candice tournament in the summer. And that's why this is always a very, very special game between Magnus. And Magnus opts for the Reti. Yeah? Magnus, I think also in the Airtings Masters in the first event, he preferred, he, he actually enjoyed a lot of, of Reti's. And Bishop G4, so a little bit early. Normally one plays with Knight F6 and C6 uh, before Bishop G4. So, okay, that, that gives Magnus the option, for example, to play Knight E5 and, and then potentially C4. So that's quite sharp. Yes, Knight E5, I'm, I'm also not such a big expert, but I, I guess, you know, if you already go Bishop G4, it means that you know all these uh, side sidelines and you want to provoke your opponent into some uh, messy kind of stuff. And Magnus is taking his time. Yeah, he just wants to make sure that he's not entering some uh, prepared opening territory of mm. his opponent. Yeah, he goes Bishop G2 and basically now if, ah, E6. I wanted to say that if Black plays the move C6, then it's it's very traditional. But he opts for e6. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's, I mean, it's a little bit unusual. Um, okay. Well, I mean, that's. But maybe we should do a little bit, little tour before we actually get into that one um, too heavily. So, okay. Where should we go next? Let's. We should look at the the uh, number two player, Ding Liren, and he's playing against Pantala Hari Krishna. Yeah, Ding Hari. This is a. Wow, I mean, I wanted to say, yeah, that it's Catalan. Of course, it's Catalan, but there is a certain twist that Dingliran started with 1GC, and this was the move order that Magnus was actually using in, in Ertings Masters in the first game, and then from GC transports to, to Reti. And now we see Dingliran using GC and finally transposing to, uh, to Catalan, because if instead of C5, Harry would have played Bishop G4, we would get exactly the same as, as Magnus in uh, Magnus versus Jan Shishtof. But Hari opted for c5, and that's how we get into reverse Grunfeld first. And then a few moves later, we get into a well-known uh, Catalan line with d takes c4, c5. Yeah, it's been... They, this feels like a theory from the 1970s. <laughs> it was a very, very popular line then. Uh, not, it's not seen so much um, these days. I wonder... Uh, well, I mean, you know, th these lines were, were sort of played out by Karpov and Anderson a long time ago. Um, there's a funny trick with Bishop H6, isn't there, in these lines? Yeah, but actually there are uh, some new twists, and I do recall that it changed like around 2008 in the Dresden uh, Olympiad, because that was the moment when suddenly computers uh, came up with this new idea that you can actually sacrifice this B7 pawn for, for active play. And uh, new engines were proving or was, were trying to prove that black gets enough compensation. And there was a really heavily debated kind of uh, theory some 10 years ago on this position. I don't know exactly where it stands at the moment, uh, but the move H6, was it H6 or was it castles? Yeah, maybe then it's it's from H6. I mean, seeing the speed by how the players are playing it, it's clear that it's preparation for both of them. Wow. So so Harry has he's ditched the pawn already. Um yeah, is this enough? Well, okay, if I the bishop's attacked, if that just goes back to G2, uh yeah, then oh, I think rook, rook B4. Rook comes, B4, yeah. rook B4, yes. Okay. And, and then, 94, exactly. That's, uh, that's I think, the critical theoretical move, 94. And a lot of, I mean, if you don't know the lines uh, which, which computer give, then basically you can start spending here already 20 minutes, half an hour to trying to figure out what's really happening. But if you know the preparation and you know the computer lines, then actually all those mysterious moves uh, make, make perfect sense. Don't ask me how the lines go, please. Oh, well, I was, I was going to say, you know, they're playing these unusual moves so quickly that they, they are going to be in, in heavy prep, basically. I mean, 94, this, it looks pretty strange already. Um, and that bishop on B7 looks almost like it's in trouble. But, I mean, I suppose, of course, white can just exchange on f6 and and oh no i was going to say bring the queen back to e4 but then the then the the bishop could 
in a, could be trapped actually. Um, well, there's there's bishop d5, but it looks a bit strange, doesn't it? I mean, black exactly. obviously has compensation there. Yeah, and black, uh, yeah, white goes bishop a6. I think, yeah, this is the move. Bishop a6, but now we also see already the reason why black feels that black might have very nice compensation because white's bishop leaves the long diagonal, yeah? White had uh, a wonderful bishop on g2, yes? He has grabbed the pawn, but by moving the bishop to a6, uh, certainly black gets very nice compensation. However, as far as I remember, when I last looked at this line was that Black still had to show some real precision against computers to, to finally prove absolutely that he's uh, perfectly fine. Yeah, the engines were always keeping some 0, 20, 0, 30 advantage after some incredible long lines, but, uh, but maybe supercomputers have even changed now. Maybe it's an even simpler draw. Yeah, that's, that's also the chess evolution that what you have checked with an engine five years ago and with a supercomputer five years ago, it might have changed with, with today's technology. Okay, so we're deep in a, in a heavy theoretical line. Let's let's continue our tour. Let's let's go to well, Richard Rapport against Zhu Wenjun. That looks a little bit unusual. Yeah, well, here definitely we don't see any forcing lines, but uh, Rapport, uh, true to his style, yeah, he's trying to find some kind of an original way of 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 playing. Uh, let's see how did we get here. So e4, e5, knight f3. Yeah, this is what I meant that, yeah, how Richard will approach the tournament because in the Grand Prix, he has been playing d4 all the time. I believe almost in all his games, he started with d4, but he clearly does not want to continue theoretical debates there. And he goes for this red line with gc. I always wonder that what white wants from this line. Yeah, that's a very big mystery. <laughs> He, he wants to get his pieces out. <laughs> That's it's as simple as that. But I mean, it's just okay. He's he's white is playing almost with the black pieces, you know. Yes, somehow I feel like also black felt that okay. I don't want to be provoked. Let me play as uh, as symmetrical as possible. And who is breaking the summit? Ah, okay. So yeah, Richard not castling. He goes immediately for knight h two, knight g four, trying to bring some dynamic. Yeah. Okay, this is really strange. This is really strange. Do you, do, you, do you think this is over the board inspiration, or is this something that he's just kind of cooked up on on a coffee break? What do you think? No, I think that usually if somebody is playing a line with with this G three, as I told you, that what is the idea? So definitely knowing uh, this this top guys, they they have some ideas, yeah, and and this that. Richard is not castling, yeah, he's delaying castles, clearly indicates that this plan is, is known to him, and he's very happy. Probably this is a very tricky line. Let's see how we get to the current position, knight d4, knight d5, c6, knight e3, and the move bishop e6 had been played very, very strange, because now after c3, black is forced to knight b5, and already knight f5, and white is oh. apparently almost winning already. Wow, knight f5 already, I mean, this... This reminds me of well, it's it's like uh, Spanish positions or you, you know how how Steinitz played uh, a long time ago. I mean, it's but but and the delaying castling and and the rook is perfectly placed on h one. This is exactly. quite extraordinary. Um, it seems to have worked out perfectly. And and Richard, I mean, he's invested hardly any time at all. Uh, well, as you've pointed out, Queen G four ready, and and it's just a very basic attack on the h file in fact it re reminds me uh, very specifically of a uh, of a beautiful game by bobby fisher ag against uh pal pal benko from the u.s championship <laughs> it's from a, actually from a spanish but exactly these pieces on the board the two bishops against bishop and knight um i'm i'm sure you, i'm sure you know the game as well peter yeah, but I mean, this one looks uh, like a, a total dream from from white side. Yeah, basically, usually when you castle, you have to move, you have to move G3, King G2, get the rook from F1 to H1, and then you you get the attack. But now everything is for free. Black is not able to break the center because white has lovely co control of the situation. Black's knight is doing absolutely nothing, and yeah, there is just 
basically no defense, I guess, against queen h3, threatening queen h7 checkmate. And after h5, white will simply break with g3, g4. And we get the dream scenario when we are getting a mating attack without even sacrificing anything. Yeah, that's, that, that's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, not just queen h3. Um, there, there are other ways to play as well. Also, bishop g5 comes to mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, the straightforward, if, if queen h3 works, then fantastic. It's, it's just over. And of course, don't forget that white can bring up the, the rook on a1 into play uh, by castling queenside or playing king e2. And then the second rook actually comes into play as well. So, I mean, this looks just wonderful for, for white. Um, yeah, extraordinary. Um, let's let's continue the tour. Let's go to, where do you want to go next? Well, there is also an extremely sharp game between the Lighting G and the Lequan Gliam. I feel like, again, also here, Lighting G fell into some terrible uh, preparation. I mean, she seems to be completely lost. I mean, this is like a marshal. And uh, yes, Black did sacrifice two pawns, but haven't sacrificed the rook or a piece for this mating attack. I mean, look at Black's pieces. And, and White's king, it seems like it's going to be a very, very tough uh, start for, for the two ladies. Mm. Okay, so should we just see how we got there? Yeah, it's uh, this very, very fashionable line now. Uh, because, you know, all my life I was playing bishop c5 and I never really wanted to get into this uh, knight g5 stuff. But now people uh, are playing it, so I also kind of uh, took, uh, took a little look at this. And yeah, there is so much theory. I mean, really so much theory. And all this is now, I mean, the recent one, two years, this line developed enormously. Yeah, this knight fc, bishop d6, castles, castles, rook e1, f5, black sacrifices the second pawn on e5. He does not protect it because just wants to come with all the pieces. Queen f6, knight fc, g5. Mm. Um, I do recall the game. What what it was? It was Levon was playing uh, one of these one of these games. Uh, the first time when I started commenting, and when when it first happened, I thought like, what? What is this? And then also it was like I think against Wesley so or Magnus was also playing it, uh, but I did not understand what is this. And then I realized that this is already mainstream theory. <laughs> all these things. Now White sacrifices the piece back. Yeah, that's kind of the spirit. Yeah, that's the whole idea of the variation. Uh, but uh, here suddenly Lech Van Biem came up with a modern touch, a 96, and after Queen C3, not worrying about the knight on A5, but going for Queen H4, uh, attack slatting mate on H2 with Queen H4, and after H3, C5 is kind of the point of this line. Yes, D5 and then Knight D4, sacrificing the knight and then coming with F5, F4, tremendous attack. Oh, I mean, this. <laughs> is really extraordinary. I mean, some of these moves, um, it just looks such good fun for Black. You know, Black's pieces are, are ready for the attack. Um, and White is grabbing material. But yeah, what an idea, just giving up the, the piece on A5. Uh, Peter, can we just go back a couple of moves? Because there was just one thing I didn't quite understand. So instead of H3... I'm just wondering what happens on g3 and because that would force the queen over. Um, well, probably then black plays something like queen g4. Right. And then tries to use this fc square, yeah? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Simply like that. I, I guess, I mean, I do recall that it happened by Demchenko. I think Demchenko already in, in a couple of Blitz games played this idea with Queen H4. It's, it's not new. And I think also Computer shows this move. I'm not playing this line with any color. So that's why I'm not an expert. But I already do notice that uh, this, is, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah. And, yeah. and look, look at our engine bar. I mean, engine bar is uh, getting some time. It's thinking, thinking and says to the current position. And after F4, look E4, that Black is probably having a forced win. Look, look at this, but okay, uh, black well, has to find it. Yeah, it's uh, you are not a computer, it might not be so simple. Okay, well, that's that's a challenge. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. knight FC pretty... check, yes, of course. Wait, the, the move is basically smiling on, on a human player. Of course, you this is the first candidate that, that you think, yeah, knight FC check, 
So white has to take, and then you, you're going to checkmate, checkmate on, on the G file. Yeah? Bishop takes H3. And this king is in a lot of, lot of trouble. Mm, there's a traffic jam of pieces on the queen side that uh, they're desperate to get over. But yeah, they're just completely out of play. Um, how on earth does white bring any pieces to the king side? It yeah, looks absolutely hopeless. Yeah, no, nothing moves this pawn on f4 just hinders any kind of uh, interference from the rook. The bishop cannot develop. The, the, these pieces are not moving. The queen is also way too far, and black is just a thing. Rook f7, rook g7, checkmate, but maybe even something else. But if the rook joins the party, it's just checkmate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks an utter disaster already. Okay, well, listen, let's move on from that. Um, yes. can, we, can we just dive back to rapport? Uh, against uh, Zhu Wenjun because few developments there. Yeah, no real surprises. Yeah, so Queen G for D4, Bishop E4, Knight D6, Queen H3, everything according to the plans. And after Knight takes E4, Queen takes H7, check, King F8, and now clearly Black's, yeah, Bishop H6. I mean, I wanted to highlight that Black's hope is probably that after D4, Queen D3 comes with, with very nice counterplay, at least. I mean, it feels like some counterplay hitting on e4, getting ready for rook a d8, scattering some ideas. Of course, the white bishop can move to e3, and it's not, not so dramatic as I'm saying. But still, it's very logical from white side that you don't really want to calculate this and you uh, use this intermezzo move bishop h6. Okay, so after bishop takes queen, queen takes check, and then the king goes to e7. Yes, then, okay, I guess we take the knight. And then again, queen d3, yeah? Yeah, queen d3. But then we have queen h4 check and then rook d1. I guess this is exactly what oh. uh, Richard has in mind. Okay, that's very nice. So so, so then king f8. Uh, but anyway, then queen h8 check. Yeah, and also rook d1 is coming. Yeah, kicking the queen away with tempo. Yes. So I, I perfectly understand, but look at this. For some reason, evolution bar says that, yeah, it's strong, it's good, but not as devastating as, as before. And I'm wondering because, okay, bishop a6 is clearly the most human move. Yeah, you just really don't feel like, especially in a rapid game, that d4, queen d3, and you look like, hang on, I wanted to mate my opponent, and black gets here some counterplay. I have to calculate lines. No way, I'm not going to, I'm not interested. And that's why the move bishop a6 is so tempting and so logical. I was actually just going back a few moves. I was actually a little bit surprised that Richard recaptured on e4 with the bishop because he could have avoided that with pawn takes. Or was he worried about queen d3 already? Yeah, maybe probably. queen. Yeah, queen d3 already. Yeah, and, and knight c3 is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But still, I mean, it, it looks as though he has a well. <laughs> It, yeah, it, but hang on, hang on, because we are talking about here some interesting, uh, incredible things, but I'm also seeing that Jordan Van Forest against David Anton is a total madness. I mean, what, what, what is, uh, the last move was now queen takes e6, and I'm guessing that just a few moves before bishop g6, ah, bishop took on g6. Okay, good. Because... Looks, looks like a caro. Yes, definitely. And it was a caro. I don't know if we have time to quickly go back or not, we might not have the time to go back. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's concentrate on this position then. Um, okay, so let me just tune in. So white is white has sacrificed a piece. There are lots of checks. Um, and there's also castle's queen side is available as well, which could be rather a tasty move. Um, whether we check first and castle queen side or immediately i'm not sure yeah and it's on the board your move is on the board long castles yeah and after c takes b2 of course white will simply play king b1 and be super happy with this king using this mm. pawn as a shield and uh, yeah this rook takes d5 queen takes g6 combined threats are brutal yeah in practical terms uh, <laughs> it looks pretty devastating once again we have a, a a player whose forces are split 
completely. The rook on a8, knight on b8, at the moment not contributing at all. Um, so it looks absolutely glorious. Let's let's just keep doing a tour because I don't want to miss out on some games. Can we go uh, to uh, Pragin Ananda against Garwin Jones? Yes, wow. Also, here we see some extraordinary thing. Look at this knight on h6. I, I think that as, as a fan of, of Gavin, you are not very happy, no? Do you know what? I've seen Garwin often um, plays some, some pretty extraordinary ideas. Um, but, but yeah, the knight on h6 is, isn't maybe the happiest, but one never knows. And he's, it, it might find its way back into the game. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, especially after hitting the e4, <laughs> yeah, f5 square is available already. Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to say was that Garwin is is used to playing uh, unorthodox positions. Um, that's not going to face him. You know, he has a very creative streak. Yeah, I mean, being a king's in, what if, yeah, it was a king's in then, yeah, there's a king's in then, and also a former dragon player, or maybe he's still playing the dragon. I remember that he now kind of switched lately to. Bishop c5 Spanish, but uh, yeah, he also wrote this wonderful book on the dragon and so on. Yeah, he has the spirit. Yeah, he has the 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 bishop on g7. He he feels this type of positions. Already. Yeah, very much so. And and actually, you know, his results with the King's Indian have have been really impressive. Actually, I mean, he wrote wrote a, a, a course for chessboard on it, and actually, um, it forced him to study it properly, which Actually, of, of course, he had done to a certain extent, but yeah, I mean, he told me that, you know, he was really using a lot of computer research um, and actually it gave him more confidence in the opening. Um, you know, he'd, he was more of an improviser before, but actually doing proper research on it, uh, I, th I think has really helped him. Yeah, but now, okay, the big question is how to have the position because... I mean, okay, yeah, Bishop FC, Rook E8, just in time, yeah, because I was wondering that, okay, Rook E8 will be a big threat, but this is now under, and it's covered, but, okay, White has the two bishops, White has a pass pawn, White has a lovely Rook on A7, the Bishop on FC looks like a wonderful piece. I mean, it, uh, White seems to have a very, very nice advantage. I was going to say, but apart from that, <laughs> let, let's let's try and find find something positive for Black. It's, I agree. It it's, it looks pleasant, of course. Yeah, the only only drawback of White's position is the pawn on f four. Yeah, because it mm. it slightly weakens some squares. It gives Black this nice outpost for the knight on f five. Uh, there might be knight f five, bishop d four, queen h four, knight g three checkmate ideas. But of course, these these are dream scenarios. I only do it for you and for the for the British fans. I, I don't believe in this uh, these ideas at all. Well, um, maybe we should just push that that B pawn and and find out where the rook goes. Actually, yeah, that's that's also very well. I just uh, take uh, keep a look on uh, on Jordan Farm Forest. I mean, let's just jump back there because it seems to be like it it might be checkmate. It it might be checkmate. Yeah, and look at this after Bishop takes e seven check. Yeah, because. After okay, we we left it here after long castles. So black tried to develop the knight and protect the bishop on e7, but now all these forcing lines are happening. Rook d5, queen b6, queen take g6, we check. And after king f8, bishop takes e7, check happened. And after king g8, now already white is uh, what white is two pawns up, having the kind of mating attack. And uh, okay, basically you can do whatever you want. It it seems. Okay, this this is just involves a bit of calculation. Um, if if one were very very lazy, one could of course just defend on the queen side and then 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 return to the king side. But uh, yeah, I mean it could could be just a forced. Yeah, I mean anything, anything. Yeah, you can protect the bishop maybe with queen e six check and then take b takes c three. You can even simply move the bishop back to a c avoiding any kind of takes on e7 and then you are having mating attack for free with, with even uh, extra pawns so yeah it's it's completely winning also the game uh, Lekwang bm against uh, thing ga seems to be completely winning for black is already exchange up the attack is going and white is basically trying to find a way to prolong the struggle but the final outcome is not in any danger 
the game between Rapport and Yuan Jun reached an end game, but White is completely winning pawn up, better rook, better pawn structure, and the king is coming. It's about to be decided. So what do we have? Please, now you can choose which game to... <laughs> okay, well, we, we have actually a, a draw in the game between Eric Hansen and Hans Niemann. Maybe we should just have a quick look at that. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was some also some very sharp Italian line. It's also a very fashionable line. Well, actually, this is I think this is theory, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of yeah. I mean, it happened in uh, Jesse Pankwagon's Giri game in uh, Vikanzi ninety five, and uh, White opted for knight x e five, which basically agreeing to to a draw after queen h three check. There is no way of avoiding the perpetual because king f1 runs into queen f2 mate. And then basically white is forced to go back. And then queen h3, this is how the game ended. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think, I think both players weren't, weren't challenged there in some ways. Uh, we, have, we weren't able to get to David Navarro's game against Vidic Gujarati. That's also ended in a draw. Yeah, that's also ended the two, and I feel like maybe it's time to to jump back to the Magnus' game to see yes. how this this big heavyweight clash uh, played out. It looks like wow! It looks like Black is absolutely fine because Duda was in time to hit with Rook A to the pawn on A five, and after Rook takes A seven, he has the move Knight C six with double attack, and it seems like he's solving. I mean, he's winning back the pawn and. Okay, I don't think that he can be ambitious, but I mean, he has nothing to worry about. The draw seems to be within reach. Yeah. Um, does does Magnus even have to be a little bit careful? Well, but he has this h4, h5. Yeah, exactly. That's. I also wanted to say that maybe Black can try to play. Then I noticed that, okay, White has h5. And then I understood that, uh, okay, there, there shouldn't be any danger. I mean, mm -hmm. you can play now rook a6 maybe, or rook is. I mean, it's tempting to keep the, the, the pin uh, along the a5, no? Yeah, okay. So it, lo it looks like it's going to be a draw. So yeah, rook, rook a6. And, and actually, um, black is going to have to do a little shuffle with rook a3 and knight c4 and... Yeah, to one pin. Yeah. But, yeah, but okay. it's it's a very good start for Duda. I mean, uh, because the pairing was very, very tricky. I, I told you that uh, how Artyom have got tricked with this pairing against uh, Magnus. And by getting a solid start, I think this is this is exactly what uh, Duda needed. And uh, what do we have? We have the Dingli and Hare Krishna clash. Yeah, this, this pawn sacrifice. And we see that everything is uh, playing along the lines that Black has compensation, but... Actually, the pawn on b2 will be lost, and it's it's not the, the this pawn does not really matter because now with bishop on e3 and with the c file, white has all the ideas like going queen c6, trading queens, and then with rook c6 hitting the pawn on a6. The pawn on a6 is vulnerable. Yeah, I think well, Dings must be pretty happy with this, and, and I I can't imagine that that somehow there he's too far away from his home preparation. I mean, I'm sure. You know, he reached some position like this. You know, if you know they they went down this line very quickly. That um, so, Ding looks very very comfortable here. This is rather unpleasant for for Hari. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have to. You remember, I told you that I don't know. Some five six years ago, I took uh, last time a look at this position, and I somehow remember now that this bishop on Easty and pawn on a five. Uh, was exactly kind of the soul of, I mean, the spirit of White's uh, play. And uh, that's why computer was insisting that, you know what, you're going to regain your pawn, but you might regret it because this bishop on e3 versus this bishop on f6 will be so much more superior once we are fighting about the a pawns. Yeah, if, if the b pawn is gone, all the attention is on the White's pawn, I mean, on the a pawns, and then uh, White, White, White has more activity. Yeah. Okay, so th this one could be a tough one. Uh, let's go. Can we go back to uh, going against uh, Pragnananda? Yes, here we are. G4 so played. G4. Now that is, of course, uh, make, makes the, the knight on h6 uh, look 
a, a little bit silly, but G4 is quite a risky move, quite a very ambitious move. Yes, but also very tempting. Yeah, that not not to let this knight get back into the game. Yeah, this is a this is a White's idea. But now the clock situation has changed because when we first saw the position, Praga had something like ten minutes versus uh, six or from from Gavin. But now it's exactly opposite. That uh, already Gavin is up one one minute on the clock. But th I think this is a difficult position for White to control because somehow. Just for a moment, everything looks a little bit loose. You know, that White needs an anchor of a pawn to, to secure the, the, the pieces. And suddenly, I don't know, the, the one bad piece that Black has, of course, is that knight. But everything else in Black's position, well, Black's pieces look quite nice. Okay, you're, you're pointing out Queenie 1 that could, could help to straighten out White's pieces. But even so, um, feels a little bit difficult yeah but this maneuver of rookie four yeah where did this look come from i feel that this was very very masterfully played by prague i mean rookie four yeah hitting the queen and after queen d3 hitting the bishop now rookie three and after the queen moves back to c4 i feel like queen e1 is smiling on on white using the resource of going for rookie a check as well getting harmony in the position okay even so, that the, the has Queen E one been played? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. But I cannot really imagine any other move, and I think it it will be on the board. Yeah. Okay. It's it's an annoying move, but hmm, I could go into contortions with Black and play play Bishop F eight to. To avoid the check, I, of course, it's not a beautiful move, but it would avoid the simplification, as as there's a, a little check on f1 for white to avoid. But yeah, queen e1, of course, looks very sensible. Um, yeah, very very tempting. Bishop f8 is a humiliating move to play, but it would have would avoid the exchange. Yeah, but of course I also have to be careful. Yeah, because if I go rookie eight and, for example, take sticks, and I'm in uh, in very happy mode that okay, let's just uh, illustrate. For example, d5 rookie eight, and I'm already celebrating that. Wow, everything is fantastic. I have to watch out for queen f1 checkmate. Yeah, exactly. That was my my motivation, of course, behind bishop f8 in in that position. Um, ah, wow. Yes, that, that would be queen fantastic. One, no, <laughs> queen one bishop f8. That was my point. Yes, inviting uh, this. But but of course it's not a bishop f8 is not a beautiful move. I was <laughs> I I'd rather not have to play bishop f8, but sometimes Wow, know, wow, but look e4. Ah, and then queen d3, queen e2. Okay, this is this is the professional approach, yeah. Oh, okay, that's what he's done. Oh, okay, that's hmm. Yeah, it makes more sense to expel the queen. Yeah, because where do you go? Yeah, if you have to move the queen, then suddenly white will get the e file. Yeah, for example, queen b1 check, king g2, and it looks lovely. I mean, white gets all the coordination. Actually, after queen queen b1 check, it, it's possible to play queen e1 then. Yes. Of course, yes. to exchange queens. But I mean, once we already get the queen to it, I'm not even sure if I want to trade queens anymore. Sure. Yeah. 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 Tough. Yeah. It's it's now it's very difficult. Uh, queen b1 yeah. and queen e1 played. Okay. Okay. Garwin has has a real fight on his hands. So Prague, let me see. He in the first Air Things Masters, he came. Uh, he got seven out of fifteen. He did pretty well, and and of course beat Magnus in in the preliminaries. Yeah, so, he played some. He played some wonderful games. He also beat Levon Aronian. I mean, yeah, he beat Magnus, uh, and he had some other. Uh, I mean, actually, it, I think it was like that against the players who qualified. From the top eight, he had some very, very nice score. Yeah, so he was actually not performing so well against the players who, who didn't play so well, but against the guys who played very well, he was actually often beating them.
Yeah, he beat Artemyev. I'm, I'm just looking here. Um, so, well, interesting that Garwin has uh, actually allowed the exchange of rooks, but he's kept the queen on the board. So, you know, he's feeling that if he's going to, you know, try and try and trick his way out of this, then he needs the queen. And King G2, uh, super solid, of course, from Prague. Yeah, we have to give credit for Prague, yeah, that I was the one who was suggesting the move Queen E1. And then Prague managed to get this position with Queen E1 on the board and with White to move. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, so King G2 played covering the F1 square. And yeah, now Gavin needs to create some counterplay. He, he wants to go D5, but it, he, he wants to push, of course, D4. But it might also weaken Black's position. Mm. For example, let's take a look. Yeah, we have been talking about this check. Can we give this check? So takes, takes. Now that we don't have to worry about this checkmate anymore. And now somehow, tar yeah, this is on the board and now targeting this d5 pawn with Maybe. something like queen d8. Oh, queen d8 even. Hmm. But, but then, then queen c2. Then queen c2, yeah. And queen d5, bishop b4. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what... So, but maybe, maybe Peter, instead of queen d8, maybe just bring the queen back to e2. Yeah, I, I have many very tempting moves. Yeah, queen e2 on the board. Yeah, still tricky, but but Garwin, you know, he's he's trying to maintain that activity. So it's not not over yet, but but yeah, obviously very difficult. Listen, can we switch to uh, Van Forest against Anton because we're reaching. <laughs> crunch moment in that game e6 played and that just makes room for the bishop to come to e5 yes that oh dear black's formation there that looks absolutely desperate oh golly beautiful position for white yeah beauty i mean i i think you also have to give credit for david anton i mean to to be hanging on for for such a long time in that position i feel it's already a true art by itself but uh, unfortunately for him, it, it does not help because, yeah, bishop e5 followed by h6 and checkmate on g7 will follow. Yeah. Now, what else have we got? Um, I can see that Carlson and Duda, that game is a draw. So we've just got three, yeah, three games left. We've got Prague against Garwin and... We yeah, and have... Ding Lee and against Hare Krishna, this is this is a terrible suffering for Black. But on the other hand, okay, Black is kind of hanging on. He did not uh, recapture the B pawn. However, by provoking the bishop to B6, somehow his pawn on A6 is, is nicely protected you know, by the white bishop. It's, uh, I think, very, very interesting way of, of defending the position from, from Pantala. Yeah, but well, this looks like a proper game of chess, actually. <laughs> with the others you know we we had some pretty random stuff going on but um yeah but just now when we when, when we were praising Harry, then the move rook h8 was not approved by the engines yeah bishop c5 using the fact now that the rook moved and there is no pin along the b file wow so maybe maybe in this respect then uh, maybe black should have just waited with rook b8 rook b7 of course a very very terrible way in a rapid game just to, to play. But since White was tied down to the B4 pawn defense, it would maybe not be so easy to make progress. In any case, after Rook H8, now White uses the momentum. And momentum and goes Bishop C5, solving this problem. Mm. Yeah, and then the Rook on B1 could... If, if the, the Bishop, for example, moves to F6, then... The rook on, and yeah, played. Then now the rook on b1 can activate. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So rook d rook d6, rook d7. Oof. Yeah. That's it, looks... it. Yeah. Now the now the black rook is suddenly logged logged out of the game on b5. Um, I can see that Richard's rapport has defeated Ju and Jun. Can we just zip to that one very quickly and see the final position because it looked like uh, well a, a very smooth end game performance. Yeah, it's it's it was over. Uh, Lekwangliam also with with the exchange up position managed to convert it very convincingly. Yeah, David Anton resigned after e6, and let's let's take a look at uh, Praga Gavin Jones because 
This one I feel that has the most potential for dramas. Uh, Praga is down to one minute, and what I feel Gavin is trying to he's trying to push uh, Praga on the, on the clock. He knows that he has a terrible position, but uh, he's trying to set traps. He he tries to fight, and okay, if somewhere Black will be able to play g5, of course uh, you need to guard the bishop first. But there are some counterplay chances. Mm, that that's poor knight on h6. Springe am Rand. Und Kummer und Schand. Yeah. yeah it sounds much better in German than in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Bishop B4, okay. In time trouble, I think this is a very, very nice move because if you are forced to trade, then suddenly Queen B4, threatening Queen E1 check is really annoying with, with such a king. Yeah. And, and seriously, I, I would not underestimate Gawain here because th this is, you know, trademark play from him you know he really understands how to make moves that are very very uncomfortable for his opponent um so even though that knight looks absolutely dreadful you know he's managed to keep some chances in this game and yeah Prague on now down to his final minute so a quick reminder of the time control it's 15 minutes but they do get 10 seconds each time they make a move, I believe. Um, but that's going to be tough, just playing on that increment. Yeah, and at hang on, King H3, now Queen F1 check. If Bishop G2, I have Queen takes F4, followed by Knight takes G4 and uh, mating threats. So I'm, I'm not sure that you can allow this. And if you have to come back to G3, I might be giving perpetual check. Yeah, well, it, there we go. So Garwin could have performed... A Houdini-like escape. Yeah, you called it. Yeah, you called it. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I did not believe. I, I know Gavin also quite well, and I know that he's very resourceful, but I thought that uh, he will not be able to escape. But now I, I feel that, I mean, practically speaking, also 40 seconds, and how do you deal with this king? Yeah, it looks, looks like he's done it. Okay, King G2, Prague. Prague is, Prague is incredible. I mean, he's not... Uh, but how, we, we, yeah, he goes King A. Look at this kid. Unbelievable. Courage wow. and, and calculation and fighting spirit. Okay, but if you, if you take, on, take on F4. Yeah, I guess he's going to push B7. Okay, but this, the, the queen is, is performing a good role of actually preventing. Um, yeah, now some F5 business might appear. F5, I mean, this is. Queen F4, B7 on the board. Yeah, this is very double-edged. Yeah, f5. And and you know, maybe maybe the knight could hop back into action via f7. Yes. I mean, there are all kinds of this or gf knight f5 and then setting queen h4 knight e3, it, it gets very messy. I mean, frankly, I think it's pretty brave of Prague to to actually play this one on because it could this could easily turn and f5 is on the board. Ooh, controlling this is not easy for white. Not at all. I think that is a well. We're going to find out whether it was brave or foolish of Prague to play on. He had the draw in in his pocket. But yeah, he might regret but, it. He but might probably, I mean, he, he felt like he had such a wonderful position before. Yeah, this I know from myself. Yeah, that often that if the game would have been logical, then it's very easy to say, ah, of course, mm -hmm. draw, finish, that's it. But he felt like you know this this game was in his hands, and there is often sometimes frustration. Yeah, that you are trying mm -hmm. to steal find win when, when you should actually settle for a draw. Yeah, it's yeah, very you, tricky. You, you feel, uh, um, yeah, you, you feel th this inertia that, yeah, I was better. And so you, you keep playing for that win. And sometimes, yeah, it's difficult to be objective. So yeah, and, and down to 15 it. seconds, yeah, King G2, just in time. Yeah, because all kinds of uh, Bishop D5, Queen take G4, checkmate was hanging the air, yeah, King G2. Ooh, that is, and now that's really difficult. Okay, a check. Yeah, there's now, a lot to calculate here. Yeah, now King H3, we might be seeing a repetition after the Queen F4. Yeah, because okay, Black should be also very. Let's not forget that B8. No, FG4. Okay, wow. <laughs> he's he's playing on. This is fantastic. And now a, a check on E3, maybe. 
I mean, it's it, it's hard to imagine that white can escape a perpetual here. But yeah, let's but, see. Uh, I mean, it's interesting that what this FTG for was was a winning attempt, or or is is Gavin not thinking that hang on, my opponent is done to thirty seconds, I should not repeat. Hmm. No, it's we might be seeing a repetition. Yeah. It looks like it to me. But. Yeah, really resourcefully played by, by Gawain. Um, but not untypical, I have to say. <laughs> He's so, so difficult to, to handle. I, I know from my own experience, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Queen D2 and the clock might, I mean, uh, the, the clock might be stopped yeah, by the engine. Queen D2 check and I, I guess it's 3-4. Yeah, that's it, finish. Oh, well, actually a really intriguing game. Yeah, very, I mean, superb defense, incredible defense by, by Gavin. Yeah, really intriguing, just in time before the, the pawn queen. So I think all games are finished. Let's just have a, a quick recap of the score. So we have winners. We have Richard Rapport, Ding Li Ren, uh, Liam Quang Lei, uh, Jon van Forest, they all won their games. We have draws for Magnus, Vidit, Duda, Navara, Gawain, Eric Hansen, uh, Pragin Ananda, Hans Niemann, and the, the losers, I'm afraid, Pantala Hari Krishna, David Anton, Ju Wenjun, and Lei Tingjie. So, well, really interesting start. Um, just a reminder to everyone watching, this is a, a very special event, the Charity Cup, um, and the Play Magnus Group have partnered with UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, to uh, raise money for children of Ukraine. So if you would like to donate, then do check out the link. So it's chess24.com slash donate, and you can donate to UNICEF. Um, Personally, it's a privilege to be involved in this. I've already donated, and I hope if you're entertained, then you feel you also feel like uh, donating as well. I, I've been feeling absolutely helpless over the past few weeks, and um, yeah, this, this is a really nice opportunity to distract ourselves a little bit, but also to help in, in the, the, the the tragedy that's unfolding in Ukraine, of course. So, Peter, um, interesting start. I, I don't know if we're going to take a short break before uh, round two, but we have uh, four games taking place today. Um, do you want to take a short break or should we should we continue? I'm not quite sure what, what's, what's been agreed. Yeah, well, it's uh, nothing is agreed. I do know from my experience that, yeah, because usually we, we keep on going that we, we never really got a chance to have a break. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was it was often that when we finally had it, then when then we used it. But now that we have it uh, right after the first game, it's it's kind of a tricky spot. It's, it's a big novelty for me as well. So I think games uh, take place on the hour. So in eight minutes time looking at my clock on the computer so maybe we should just take a five minute break um we we need to keep our energy for uh this uh this long day um so let's take a very short break we refill our cups of tea and we'll see you in about five minutes time so do come back and join us in about five minutes Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app.
quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. I kept Chessable a secret for three years at least, uh, and I was using it for my... Welcome back, everyone, to the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour Charity Cup. Play Magnus Group have partnered with UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, 
to help the children in Ukraine. So if you're entertained by the proceedings in this fantastic tournament, such a, such a great lineup of players, a really interesting, diverse lineup of players, then do consider donating chess24.com slash donate. You can find the links on the screen. So we're about to kick off with round two in one minute's time. Peter, which pairings stand out for you? Well, the, the matchup between Vidit versus Laporte, I think, is a very, very interesting and very important one. I mean, it's a real prestige duel because in the recent uh, Belgrade Grand Prix, we keep on mentioning that, but we know the importance of that uh, Grand Prix series qualifying to the candidates. And Vidit was in the same group with Laporte, and Vidit started with two out of two. And at that moment, uh, in the third round, came the decisive game between Laporte with White against Vidit. And it was essential for Rapport to, to win that game. And he managed to beat Vidit in an E3 Nimso. And uh, afterwards, when later in round five, uh, round five, they meet again when uh, Vidit had the white pieces, then he was in a must win situation against uh, Richard. And he got a very promising position, but Richard then with his artistic skills managed to, to create complications and uh, Vidit lost control. And Richard went on to win that game as well. And by beating his direct concurrent with it 2-0, he guaranteed the win of the group and went on to win the, the Grand Prix. And uh, now has fantastic chances to qualify. And now we see the game E4, E5, Knight FC, Knight C6. So no, no French. I think in that game, Rapport played the French against uh, with it. Yeah. Uh, Richard had to has sort of come back from behind, didn't he, <laughs> in, in that preliminary group but uh, yeah certainly did really well um spanish now i wonder well you mentioned that richard has sort of uh, become a more even player he's managed to mingle his creativity with uh somehow a more responsible play and we're seeing a very solid spanish on the board a closed spanish not even threatening a marshal I'm curious to see which variation he's going to go for. So it's an old mainline Chigurin. I mean, this is something from uh, well over 100 years ago. And, and I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see Richard play this one, actually. Yeah, the big question is, did he get inspired by Eric Hansen? Because Eric Hansen was the one who used the Chigurin Spanish in the previous tour. I mean, the, the previous event uh, with very, very good... Uh, Results. I mean, he beat uh, Magnus with the Chigorin, he beat Duda in the Chigorin, and he drew with Jesse Penko. I think the two and a half that I out of three, just what I can recall. But now the move, Rookie, this is a sideline, and it's kind of a typical uh, rapport move. Yeah, leaving all the long theoretical lines behind. Yeah, usually one of the main lines is C takes D4, C takes D4, Knight C6, and then Knight BC, Knight B4. Bishop B1, A5 with tons of theory. That was the line exactly that uh, that Eric uh, Hansen used against Magnus. Mm. So And Magnus had that catastrophe, didn't he? Exactly. He made a terrible blunder, actually. But yeah, in, and also, you know, very interesting that, that Eric had prepared the, the mainline Chigurin. Um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit of a revival. It's not that fashionable. Um, I can remember, you know, going back to the 1980s, there was this, this famous game, Tal against Hjartason, where Tal played an extraordinary sacrifice with, with Rook C5, and I mean, just an absolute masterpiece. But yeah, it's, it's not so fashionable. Yeah, not, no, not at all. I mean, also one has to understand that since the Marshal appeared and White started to fight against the Marshal with all these anti-Marshals and so on, uh, often White got so frustrated, let me just highlight one thing, because we have been talking about this, and then after castles, often now white plays, no, it comes from, from 6d3, let me just show this, that now it's one of the main lines fighting against the marshal, like white does this, black castles, white plays something like h3, black plays knight a5, bishop c2, c5, and white can push d4, but basically, white is tempo down because his look is not yet on e1. And even here, because this is fighting the marshal, white is kind of happy reaching the chigorin position with tempi down. Yeah, I think this explains 
Why psychologically nowadays nobody really wants to play the Chigorin? Because okay, if the marshal puts such a pressure on White that White is even desperate enough to play like this, then then why to do the Chigorin with Black? Yeah, mm. Peter, I, I sense you've you've spent some time over the last last year studying these Spanish positions. Well, but let's not forget it was also my main weapon against Kramnik in 2004 in my World Championship match. Yeah, I used uh, Marshall and we had a lot of anti-Marshalls. Yeah, I feel like I have spent my last 20, 25 years with studying all these kind of positions. Okay, but but uh, absolutely. Um, but during your career, but your playing playing career, but uh, yeah, last year, of course, you, you had a specific job. <laughs> R- remind it, remind everyone. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Okay, but I think everyone knows, yeah, that in the match between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Yapomniashi, we have seen tons of anti marshals yeah, uh, dif- different lines: the HC anti marshal the A4 anti marshal Then uh, Magnus there was uh, bringing this new idea with Rook B8 that he invented against Duda in the World Cup. I mean, yeah, really, so much things are happening in the anti marshal and and in general in. Whole whole chessboard. I mean, all the lines, all the openings are developing in rapid, uh, rapid pace. And uh, during ju- the just match, incredible. During the match, that was you know obviously one of the things that you were looking at personally for for Jan. Well, but usually, I mean, in in these matches, you are looking everything. I mean, especially before the match, yeah, you are looking everything. Then uh, during the match, you are narrowing, of course, the 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 territory. Yeah. Basically, seeing what your opponent is doing, and but you never exactly know if uh, the opponent wants to repeat that line. Also, you are not sure if you're gonna. I mean, it it uh, there is so much mind games in in the matches. Yeah, that mm. everybody knows that the opponent's team also has incredible analysts, and they are working like crazy. So you always have this feeling, this temptation to try to make the first surprise. Yeah. Mm. It's uh, it's not like in a normal tournament. In normal tournament, you don't pay so much attention to to all this kind of preparation because you are playing your game. But in a world championship match, when you know that so much heavy preparation is involved, then then you are always thinking about how to surprise. Very very interesting position actually. The the, the knight has come to c four. That's quite awkward for white already. Um, because if the pawn advances, the pawn on b2 is attacked, then that knight might hop in to, to a3, actually. Yeah, oh, black Black it, actually, happens. I guess... Oh, well, he's come back. Yeah, okay, he, he so, came back, yeah. I was the wondering point about, is... What, what about knight a3, though? Yeah, it's uh, only that he wants to control the d5 square. Yeah, that's, that's why he doesn't play knight a3, because after all, his position is a little bit compromised. Yeah, with pawn on g6... The knight cannot, knight, bishop are kind of tied to each other. And if white gets knight is still, then there might be some problem there. But first you are hitting, oops, first of course you are hitting the bishop. So white would have to answer a question. We don't know exactly what, but okay, knight b6, queen d2 on the board. And probably we should also continue our tour as we usually do. Yeah, the, the moment passed, the moment passed. Anyway, it was it was an intriguing position. Um, yeah, let's listen, let's let's go to the world champion. Let's yeah. Let's find Magnus's board. So wow! And w- what is happening? I mean, if lo- look at the clock situation, how important it is, and how telling. Yeah, if we would not be able to see the clock situation, we might be thinking that Hari Krishna somehow after the loss in the first round got affected and he blundered something and he's in a lot of trouble. But looking at the clock situation, it looks like he voluntarily went into these sacrifices. And uh, he kind of uh, knows what he's doing. Okay, so let, let's go from the top because I mean this is super sharp. The classical and now knight c e two the Steinitz variation. We've already mentioned Wilhelm Steinitz, um, and of course Vichy was a great exponent of knight c e two as well. Interesting, he's gone knight f3 and not f4, actually. Exactly, yeah. This this was also why I kept silent, that suddenly this one that going knight c2 and then not playing f4, but going knight f3, it's, it's a little bit strange. Yeah. Yeah, queen a5, yeah. This is this is the typical move that black is actually threatening with knight takes d4 often. Yeah, this is, the, this is the key move in these positions. And b4... 
Wow. I mean, th- that's yeah. exactly what we are talking about. That B4 is such a terrible blunder that it, it can't be a blunder. It has to come, you know, that actually Holly knows what he's doing after CB4. He goes Bishop D3 and B takes C3. He goes Queen C2. But now after H6, he slowed down. This is the only thing that I'm, I'm not really understanding because if it's really preparation, then you should actually know your follow-up. You have sacrificed the house already. Yeah, and there's and there's also a threat of playing knight b4 for black. Yeah, well, okay, after knight b4, anyway, it's in the split that I'm just going to sacrifice this exchange, and I'm probably happy that I got rid of this knight because it puts some pressure on the d4 pawn. But, okay, how do I get my initiative going? That's the very big question. Well, well okay, if, if white is happy, then white may as well castle. If, if you're not worried about knight b4, then... Yeah, but if I if I castle, then I can't really launch my some some pawn storm anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but but I mean, I assume I was going to attack with knight h five anyway, rather than the pawn storm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so but, you would. You so would, uh, so I want to play knight h five and just threaten to take on h six. And and immediately, or how you want to do it? Well, if immediately, then knight b four might be. A, well, but no, knight b knight b four. I'm just very happy. I mean, takes takes okay, and, and now castles. castles. Yes. We get a big tempo setting, and this queen is, is also terrible on A1. Yeah. But look at this. No, no. Harry says, no, Peter, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm I going to go to B1. <laughs> there you are. So maybe, you know, he wants to keep in, in reserve this, this uh, G4, G5, possibly. But I mean, I, I like this very straightforward idea, just knight H5, threatening bishop H6, and then you... To, after knight h5 you take on h6 and then the queen drops to c1 but okay i mean it, I, I think white needs to to think about casting at some point anyway but yeah i suppose with rook b1 you know it does keep black's pieces bottled up it's hard it's hard to see how magnus is going to actually unravel his pieces here yeah, it's it's a very good point that actually Harry is highlighting that, yes, I have sacrificed two pawns, but uh, how do you develop your pieces? Rook b1 stops any kind of b5, b4, bishop a6 counterplay, yeah, because that would be just lovely for, for black if he could get rid of this bishop. Now also, the queen on a5 is some kind of a target because after b6, uh, threatening bishop a6, white has rook b5. So mm-hmm. black screen gets in a lot of, lot of trouble. And That's nice. I love that. That's really good. Yeah, and, and then, okay, how and this knight on f4 hinders any kind of f6 break because the e6 pawn is kind of loose and also bishop a7 check followed by knight g6 is, is a big problem for black. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> devastation already. And, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, wow. very interesting. I mean, of course, black has all kinds of ideas, like even knight takes d4, knight d4, knight takes e5. I would... Not rule out at some point. Black has basically four pawns and four central pawns, changing the character of the position. It's that, certainly hanging in the air. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think Magnus will be considering that. I think this might be the moment to go for it, frankly, because if you if you wait around, it could be absolutely fatal. I mean, yeah, the only take, other thing. Let, yeah, let's take a quick look. Yeah, what 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 is happening here? Takes, takes, and takes. Basically, yeah. we are threatening to take this bishop, yeah, which is the real problem. Yeah, no, I, th- I think you're right. I think this, I think this sacrifice, it, it's a kind of Magnus way of playing the position. He doesn't like to wait around. He doesn't like passive positions. I think he would rather just give something up. And well, I mean, after all, he has at the moment four pawns anyway. I mean, presumably the pawn on c3 is going to drop, but. I, I think this is kind of a Magnus solution. You know, he cuts cuts the Gordian knot. Yeah, it's it's very, very tempting. Of course, yeah, if, if suddenly White has a very good follow-up here, then 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 it might be premature, but I don't see this wonderful follow-up for White. Mm. Yeah, Magnus taking his time. Yeah. And well, he's down to down to seven and a half minutes against. Uh, Harry's 14 minutes. So, well, it's we're not down to the minute phase, but that is that's a huge chunk of time. I I'm really intrigued to know whether whether Harry actually prepared this. You know how how wow. much was preparation? 
Wow, knight d4 on the board, and engine bar immediately says, you know what? White is doing absolutely fine, but we are talking about human uh, game of chess. It's a rapid game, a lot of emotions involved, and as you said, yeah, Magnus is also very much in the spirit, you know, to, to change the character of the position. You want to attack me? No way I'm not going to give you the attack. I will create my counterplay with a peace sacrifice. Okay, so this one is brewing nicely. Uh, typical Magnus. Listen, let's let's move on. Let's let's go to uh, Liam Kwang Lei against Ramesh Babu Pragananda. Let's see what we've got there. Okay, this this looks more orthodox. Yeah, it looks uh, very understandable, yeah, strategically speaking. Yeah, also Black's last move, b5, b4, is such a pleasant move to, to play. Bla Black basically breaks White's structure, tries to get control of the d5 square, yeah, because if now the knight moves, then uh, also Black gets control. And after he takes b4, then knight takes b4, hits the bishop, opens up the bishop, gets this wonderful knight, d5 square under control. I mean, I love this type of position from the Black side. Uh, usually you don't get them. Yeah, that, that's the only problem. But now uh, having this on the board, I feel like that maybe in order to keep the balance, actually White needs to be super careful here. I I, I wouldn't be quite as pessimistic. <laughs> I would be uh, I would be reasonably happy with White's position here. Uh, knight a4, okay, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely, I mean, ab4 was an illustration that, yeah, ab4, sure. knight before, and yeah, black is super happy, white has to keep the tension, because pawn on a6 is, of course, not really hanging, because bishop takes f6 is not something black can allow in this position with, with queen on b8. I mm. believe that this will be some mating attack. Um, I mean, also, white can maybe just first include rook b1, there is some pin, and you still have this issue. Uh, it's it's not in the spirit from black to to collect this pawn. Yeah, you see, I, I yeah, I, I rather rather like white's position actually because you know I can see potential threats to take on e6 and and obviously the knight coming into c5. Um, to me, it just looks like typical isolated queen's pawn position where yeah, I I would take white here very, very happily, actually, I have to say. Yes, you know, after knight a4, I mean, okay, I'm still happy with black, but uh, this is the this is the question. Yeah, this is definitely now the moment where black has to find the good move. Yeah, that because, okay, this a before knight before is then super easy. Here one needs to justify also the move b5, b4, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Okay, B takes AC looks very tempting, yeah, to if you already pushed B4. Okay, so we recapture. Yeah, you recapture. And okay, now at least also the B file opens up, yeah? Yeah, that's, that looks quite appealing. Okay, one question that if I include H6, for example. Okay, if I, if I want to play H6, I feel like I should maybe even play H6 here. Okay. Then how do you react? Well, first of all, I'll have a little think. <laughs> I don't uh, really want to take on f6, so I suppose I, I want to play bishop h4 because at least that will give white the option potentially to play to g3 and to, to kick the queen in some positions. But let's let's try that. Yeah, bishop h4. Okay, I feel that now at least I got access to the f4 square for my queen. Yeah, I would really love to jump with queen f4 somehow. Activating the screen. Can I do this? Um, I see. So you want to play so bishop g3, queen e4. Yeah. True. And you might have knight d4 as well. Yes, I, I'm setting now many things. Tricky, tricky. Knight knight c5? Is that yeah. is, is that legal? Yeah, that's that's the big question. Yeah, is it legal or not? Yeah. So, how mm. does it work out? Knight takes d4. Rook d4. Yeah. Yeah. Rook d4. And oh, because the the rook on c1 is hanging. Is hanging with check. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. So this could be good. Oh, very very sharp. 
No, okay, you can, yeah, you can take on D4. Yeah, everything is hanging in for everyone, but then already it feels like, okay, something should work out, yeah, for black. Because also the bishop on B7 is still hanging, yeah? Yeah, mm, yeah, it could, could be okay for white, actually. So, yeah, rook D4, ah, bishop C5. Yeah, yeah, Bishop, Bishop G3, G3, it still continues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Queen E, Queen E4 actually. Yes, Queen E4 exactly because Rook C5 then takes and the Rook on D1 is pinned. Yeah, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Ah, and we, I mean now also Queen G2 checkmate is is a threat. That that's a possibility. Yes, and Queen E4, Knight E4 protecting and and winning. Yeah, so really lot of lot of tactics and it, yeah. it all comes down already to this move that can Black include A6 or not? Yeah, so it's that's why not an easy. Not an easy thing to, to calculate and also to decide on. But h6, I feel like it's, it's the move in the spirit. You have to kind of uh, challenge White's bishop on g5. Please show me. Do you capture on f6? Do you give me the chance for this queen f4 complications? Really interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's move on. Let's go to... We haven't looked at uh, David Navarre's game. In, we didn't look at his game in the first round. So let's, let's go there. So he's playing... Black against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Oh, heavy, heavy strategy. Yeah, completely logged, uh, logged down position. Okay, I mean, from white side, you can be probably more happy because you feel like, okay, you have everything under control. You don't know exactly how you're going to break, but with this knight on G3 and the knight on E3, pawn E4, G4, no, no breaks are possible, and with, with the two knights, you can shuffle around. Looks, looks like a lot of fun for white to me. Yes. Um, in, in the long term, black's king is potentially in trouble, actually, if, if, the, position manages, if the position breaks open. Um, but white has... Well, I mean, the one thing I'm looking at here is... Yeah, I mean, okay, you, you're pointing at king g2 and rook h1 and, and h4, of, of course... Um, but actually, I'm also looking at the other side of the board. I'm looking at potentially playing rook b1 and c3 and then going for a b4 break or a d4 break, actually. Um, I, would, I would like to play d4 because that will absolutely explode the position. And then black's king lacks good cover. And yeah, exactly. Those are the moves I would like to play with white. Um, because I... I I fear for Black's king actually when when you know this G pawn has advanced, but I mean obviously that would just completely explode the position and you know there would be consequences for why. Well, interesting. He's played H four straight away. Yeah, basically, yeah, he, he can because anyway, Black Black can't take on H four. Yeah, I mean G H four probably also Knight F five is very mm. strong. Also, knight h5 would be good enough. Yeah, this uh, breaking the structure is, is just, just not possible for black. And h4, h6. However, in order to make good use of the h file, you, you will have to probably get this look h1, king g2 in. Uh, it's, it's a method of choice. Uh, the line that, uh, the plan that you mentioned was also another line that I was considering that, yeah, I have this kind of option. I have this kind. I just felt like, you know, that this h4, king g2, Rook h1 and then maybe just double on the h file is a very simple, very primitive way for rapid chess, maybe just uh, more suitable, like, okay, very straightforward and black is anyway in a lot of trouble, then why should I even bother trying to open up the center? Yeah, true. Uh, I agree in, in practical terms. Uh, yes, C <laughs> C3 and D4 is the, uh, the kind of crazy way to play. That, that's my way. Uh, but he's played Rook G2. That's, that's a funny little shot. Okay, that's what he's doing. All right. Okay. Yes. That, in that in that way. <laughs> yeah, but a very stylish move. Yeah, because very. just just to make sure that whenever black captures on h4, if black changes the mind, then of course the rook on the on g file will do a fantastic job. But of course, black will never consider taking. Yeah, black can only sit and wait. But yeah, this is ah okay. Queen d8 basically already prepares. Uh, protecting the h8 rook, yeah? So once white is doubling on the h file and then trying to evacuate the king, somehow trying to reach safety on the queen side. Yeah, and, and actually it's a nice maneuver to, to bring the king over to the queen side. Um, still, 
not so easy to break through, actually. Yeah, but on the other hand, I mean, okay, it came from a Berlin, I mean, from an anti-Berlin, from DC. This is the absolute dream. I mean, the mega dream for white. And uh, as a white player, I know that usually in such moments, you are not really thinking about, okay, how are I going to win? You are just enjoying the position and you keep on uh, putting the pressure. And then finally, uh, you will... You will notice because, yeah, Rook H2, if in, white... In fact, in fact, he can triple, of course. He can, exactly. He, yeah, and Queen H1. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Exactly. And so the Rook, well, I was going to say it probably has to leave the H file um, and, you know, sit on G8. Um, but there is Knight F7 to protect it. But actually, no, I think that would, that would potentially be a mistake. I think the rook is going to have to after after the tripling. I think the rook will have to leave and, and to go to g8 because after the a massive exchange on h8, then knight h5 would win the the f6 pawn. Yes, exactly. I mean, okay. Only one little question from white side that not suddenly after rook h3 some counter strike with h5 works. Yeah, that's the only thing white has to make sure. If it does not work, then of course rook h3, rook h2, queen h1 will be played automatically. Mm. Yeah, and the funny thing is, although Black's king sort of feels right to evacuate to the queen side, in fact, in some positions, it's too far away from the action. But look at this. For example, in this line, it's crucial that white gives the check on, on g4 and black is not able to get rook g18. Of course, it was an illustrative line after h5, probably white can all, but it, it seemed like it's, it's quite an important line. Because a g5, a g, uh, f takes g5 is, is a tempo, and then black will get the chance to push h5, h4, lock down the position. Yeah. So maybe a very, very critical moment. In fact, that, but I, this, it means that after rook h3, then I'm going to go king b8 first. And if you play rook h2, I might consider h5. Uh huh. Yeah, that's, that's tricky, tricky. Listen, let's let's switch and and uh, let's go back to oh Magnus. What is happening in Magnus Carlsen's game? This looks like we've had huge developments there. Yeah, well, actually everything worked in the in the way like we wanted or we, we dreamed with Black. No, I mean this peace sacrifice, and then you get three connected pawns like this. Why doesn't really or the only question is is Queen G3 posing some problem, but it's black to move. Then definitely not. Wow. So okay, knight takes e5. Yeah, Hali moved with the bishop to e2. Now Magnus played knight c6. And in this moment, we can I think just conclude that black is just clearly better. Knight bc queen d8. Hang on, the pawn on cc is not not hanging. Why didn't okay? I understand that yeah, it runs into e5, it runs into everything, but yeah, e5 and then knight h5, bishop f5 tempo probably. Yeah, this even this one hurts big time. And then the bishop will always cover to g6 whenever white plays queen g3. Yeah, it's that, that's why Hari did not want this to happen. So he opted for, for queen d3 instead. And d4, knight h5. Yeah, he's trying to put some pressure on this g7 pawn, but e5. And now, uh, instead of Queen G3, he went for castles. Oof, what a pawn chain. I suppose he, he perhaps wants the option to, I mean, of course, there's Queen G3. If it works, it works. But he, but he also has the option to play F4 to, to break up those pawns. Perhaps that's what he, he has in mind as well. Because I was sort of thinking about, oh, well, maybe maybe bishop g5 to exchange, but but then f4 could come. Exactly. Yeah, this is... I mean, we should not underestimate. Yeah, after all, all of white's pieces are in the game. Black has not yet mm. uh, completed development. If, if black gets a chance to develop the bishop, get the rook into the game, then, of course, the four pawns and this pawn chain will be decisive. But white still has the momentum. And he wants to use the momentum to create counter chances. Well, okay, let's let's try and find a move from my okay. Let, let me play G6. in the most crude way. No, I he played, played already g6. You don't get G6. a chance. <laughs> I, I wanted to play f5, but okay, that's the moment has passed. 
Yeah, but of course, yeah, g6 was, was very, very nice because it's not only that hitting the knight, but also prepares bishop f5, yeah? And, and knight g3, this is a sad retreat. Okay, still you have this idea that you wanted with f4, that's the only way to fight. Sorry, by the way, quick question. Why, did, why couldn't you play bishop h6? Okay, I guess bishop f5. And then just take the rook. So, I mean, queen g3 here. Yeah, oh, there's then bishop also there H4, is bishop, bishop H4. H4. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm slow. Yeah. No, I mean, okay, such is the position. Of course, you have to calculate. It's the only, of course, in, in the game, you understand if you have to lead the knight, probably you are losing the momentum. You have to calculate. But yeah, we had to believe Magnus, yeah, because he spent quite a lot of, but Magnus down to two minutes. Okay, there is still some intrigue. G6, knight, GC, H5 on the board. No, absolutely. This this can still go horribly wrong. Okay, let's go f4 then. Yeah, but f4, h4. Okay, but let's just do it. Just do it. But what next? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> because there is also this idea of going f5. Yeah, just ignoring everything. You go f5 and h takes g3, then maybe even queen takes g3. And trying to create some, but okay, I don't really believe in it, but I'm in a desperate mode. Yeah. Okay. I mean, normally I would be uh, sounding the trumpets and, and giving a big fanfare for F5, but that looks pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah. I've played much worse than that, but not, not gladly. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it looks pretty rotten for white. Um Maybe we should start with bishop h6. Here to start bishop h6, yeah? Yeah. Okay, bishop h6. Of course, there is also a big temptation just to ignore it, go h4 and... Wow. Yeah, possibly. I mean, ju just an illustration of what we are talking about. Yeah, so h4, if black, I mean, white takes the rook, logical. Okay, I'm going to take back with, I don't know, bishop or queen. Let's take with the bishop. Knight jumps to e4. We go f5. And then we go e4. Yeah. To, to, to be honest, I was thinking um, maybe recapture with the queen. To yes. Co cover the c5 square. Exactly. It's um, more harmonious, yeah. And, and, then, and then play f5 because now knight c5 is ruled. And actually, white has to play knight c3 here, I guess. Yeah, which is okay. Not not the end of the world. Yeah, actually, it's it's kind of nice that you have it. But yeah, Harry doesn't want any of it. He wants to go for this f4. I think he's also looking at Ice Magnus's cloak, and he wants to put some pressure. Yeah, practical yeah, and, pressure. And by the way, after h4, um, okay, you mentioned f5, but perhaps just knight e4. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, h4, knight e4. I want, actually wanted to go bishop f5. I was thinking about this pin. Yes. I didn't want to think about the pin. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why, you know, the thoughts like, okay, then I'm going to go F4, F5. I don't care what's, what's happening anyway. It's not my pieces. So I can sacrifice them. Well, then uh, here, G4. Yeah, G4, A, G. White, white is still a piece up. A, G, yeah. It's not, yeah, is... it's not completely clear, actually. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, okay. Magnus going e f4, but yeah, e f4, bishop f4. I feel like, okay, at least, yeah, h4, knight e4, bishop f5, all, all very logical. But now, so we are ah, bishop a6, knight e5. Okay, this oh. g4. So your, your moves are on the board. Okay, so now he has rook f5, of course. Rook f5 to stir things up on the, the king side so yeah and magnus down to well one minute i can one minute 15 this is not so simple no not at all yeah queen, queen, queen. of course nice but mm, yeah i'm sort of tempted to play rook f5 anyway to be honest yeah rook f5 but queen uh... queen, queen takes and then rook f1 yeah, look f1, queen d5, hitting the knight on c3. I mean on b3. Right. You might try to ignore and go for knight f6 and then try to go for rook g6. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. But mm, yeah, I mean 
there, there's maybe knight takes uh, knight f6, bishop f6, rook f6, king g7. Might yeah, be. yeah. And the, the, the knight on b3 hangs, I guess. And then basically, okay, I have some rook takes c6 idea, but yeah, it, it doesn't seem to be enough. Yeah. But okay. yeah, it's uh, it, it's a very critical moment. I mean, he can just go bishop f3, but it feels a bit slow. Bishop, bishop, oh, he's played bishop f3, knight e5. Oh, knight f6. Yeah, but what is it? I mean, I saw this line, but I, I did not really appreciate it so much. So if pawn takes, then bishop takes, and white is still a piece up. But those pawns look menacing. Yeah, well, also, I mean, most natural would be to take on f3, I guess, but... Yeah. But maybe there is some hidden, yeah, knight takes f3, okay, it's the most natural one. But it's some kind of a blockade, yeah, black is probably better, but now I also feel like white has all the chances to hold this. This is, is now a weakness, yeah. Uh, what, so you think rook d3 or... or d3? Yeah, rook d3, then I have some knight e1, knight c2 blockade, you know, it, it might be one bishop f2, I feel like all my pieces are playing. Okay. I only don't know how to... Yeah, knight e1, but now I was afraid that, okay, b7 pawn is hanging, but not that black gets a rook to e2, but it's not, not happening. Yeah, how immediately spotting this, yeah, regrouping the knight to c2. That's, that's a really nice maneuver. I was I was looking at playing the knight back to c1 and then to d3, but this is much better, of course, because, uh, you know, if if uh, white can attack the pawn on d4, then it's, it's kind of active. All right, so rook e8 is a disruptor because that rook can come down to e2. Yeah, but for example, now also this uh, tactical line with rook takes b7, yeah, because also starting rook takes f7. How does this work out? Mm. Well, that's interesting. I, I think that was also the reason why Harry started with knight a1, yeah? That uh, he wanted to keep the rook on f3, yeah, king f1, okay? Covering the e2 square, very mm. nice. Well, when you're so short of time, this is not an easy position for black to control. No, not at all. Yeah, actually, I mean, if white gets everything in, then black also has to be careful a bit, yeah? Yeah, so, I mean, white's next moves, uh, as you say, knight c2, rook d3, bishop f2, suddenly hitting d4. Um, uh, Magnus has gone for rook d8. So I assume that white has to blockade with rook d3. Yeah, and then does Magnus want to go rook e3 using the momentum to enter? Probably that's what he wants. Could be. Just breaking the blockade, yeah, because if white gets knight c2, rook d3 together, it's, it's irritating. Well, don't you don't have to take. I don't have to, yeah, but then that means I have to go rook bd1. Yeah, 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 exactly, rook, rook yeah. over and then knight c2. Yeah. It's actually not the end of the world. Yeah, but uh, okay, I feel like if white is already setting up the blockade, then maybe I'm happy with the trade of rook from rooks from, from black side, but I'm I'm not sure. Okay, rook d1, b5 on the board, so Harry goes for rook d1. Magnus immediately, uh, he wants to go b5, a5 as quickly as possible, now that white rook had to move. Hmm, more, more trouble, more pawns. That <laughs> looks potentially serious. Yeah, the pawns are storming. But still, I mean, okay, b4 is also under control, yeah? So after knight c2, what is the follow-up? Yeah, on the board. Hmm. Really interesting. You know, Magnus's king is a long way from the action, and white's king is actually okay. So if... That d4 pawn falls, then white's king is is in a good position. Yes, yes. But on the other hand, also Magnus feels that with a5 and then potentially b4 coming, 
Yeah, if I won the board, then even if he loses the d4 pawn, then with this b4 c3 pawns, he will have uh, probably even the advantage. So white also has to be very careful how to eliminate this d4 pawn. And Magnus down to 30 seconds. We should stick on this one because I think we're... Wow, just a very, very quick uh, update. Uh, Duda has checkmated uh, Navarra's king in an endgame. We will be showing this final position once oh, the yeah. action ends here. Oh, yeah, I want to go back to that one. Okay, so Magnus playing rook b8 and he's ready to push with b4. So he's certainly trying trying to play actively here. I guess you can still go rook b1 if necessary. Yeah, the big question is that how does white evaluate? Because uh, white, I think, now can go to a force. F FG mm. versus H pawn end game. Yeah, for example, if I take bishop mm. G4, you play B4, A B A B, for example, it's just an illustration. Bishop G7, King G7. And then uh, I can I can always sacrifice on. Of course, I want to go for the first of all, that end game is, is terrible. So I don't want to, I just want to illustrate that there are all these chances. Because then White's King is terrible on F1. So that's why yeah. it's not, not recommended. Yeah. But but exactly in this line, finally there was rook g7. I mean rook d7, which was also uh, which would also bother black big time. So I guess some some other moves might have have to be played. But what exactly? So after rook b8, if if we take bishop d4, then how can black avoid this line? Because the c3 pawn is hanging, yeah. So you can't pin me. Yeah, but in that line, anyway, black could play rook f8 just to defend the f7 pawn. Yes, but okay, if you have to, then it's also kind of a very tempting line from white perspective, no? But Yeah, but just rook f8. Rook f8 and okay. Actually, surely white just has to take on b4 and then has this end game, which is yeah. just better for black. Yeah, it's, it's very, very unpleasant. So I don't actually I don't think rook d7 changes anything. So I'm not surprised that that Hari is having a big think here because oh, he's he's taken and b4 is it's on the board. Yeah, he had no other alternative. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's on the board. Oh, he hasn't played rook d7 yet. Yeah, but he will. I think he will. Well, I I know he goes knight a1. Wow, he goes knight a1. What does it change? Okay, I don't get that. So what's what's wrong with b3? Yes, that's the that's the question. Oh, oh he wants to play knight take. b3. Rook takes b b2 knight b3. Exactly. Wow, what what oh. a defense! Incredible. So he's yeah, rook a8. Trying to rook keep a8. his extra pawn. So that's why rook a8 instead. Wow, but what a creative mind, yeah? Harry is mm. knight a1. I mean, wow. If if this knight gets away with all this with this these spins and this blockade, it would be something of a miracle, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is it just feels like those pawns are getting much too close. Yeah, and also I feel like if White's king would be somehow on G3, we would be actually quite optimistic from White's surviving chances. But yeah, this king on the first rank is also an issue. Mm. True. Okay, well, let's... So Magnus basically just wants to play rook h2 here. Yeah, just... Yeah, rook f2, rook f trying to protect. Trying to protect. Also now somewhere maybe rook takes a1, rook a1, bc, I don't know. Also when, when the moment comes when those pawns are unstoppable, I don't know. But maybe it's completely unnecessary. I just have a funny feeling we're going to get to this rook and two against rook and one in game. One way or another. Yeah, could easily be. Magnus now down to 10 seconds. Yeah, that F5. is uncomfortable. Yeah, F5. I mean, with, with so little time on the clock, yeah, because he knows that he's better, he's doing fine, but there are no force ways of, of playing the position. Okay, so what happens on Rook B1? 
Is Black just going rook, rook b8 or what? Yeah, or rook e4. I, yeah, okay. He goes knight b3. He wants to activate this knight. Yeah, white, I think, yeah, rook e3. I mean, after rook a3, white would have played rook b1 and then set up some kind of a blockade. Mm. Rook e3 is threatening c2 now because the rook is hitting the knight. Now the big question, do you go rook b1 or do you try to get active rook d7 and rook b7? Yeah, it's a big, big decision. Rook B1 is more, more professional, trying to keep everything under control. Rook C8. Maybe now it's the time to come back with the knight to A1. Now it's the time to come back. <laughs> or okay, you can also jump to D4, it's the same idea, but now you, you get knight C2 and you tar yeah, knight D4 is the same. Yeah, get the knight to C2. Wow, absolutely fantastic. This is good. The, the, the knight is the, the MVP of this game, of Haru's position. Well, if he survives, and he's, he also survives. Done to, he's done to 15 seconds as well. Knight c2, yeah, he's done it. And now Magnus had to defend the pawn on b4. Well, I... yeah, rook e2. Now, only square is to hide the rook from the trade is, is on h4. He's played. Extraordinary. Uh, yeah, I was... Of course, it would be wonderful if that rook could check and then go to b7, but h2 is hanging. So that's why king g2 is played. Yeah, king f6. Ooh, I... Ah, oh, that's nice. So that gives the king a little bit of protection, a little bit of security. Yeah, so... also, also covering the g4 square. Exactly, exactly. So it, it, uh, is it possible? Oh, yeah, now he can hassle the king. After that move. Yeah, king f6, king g2, king g3. Hari could have, I mean, it was not a repetition with king g2. It was repeating the position, but uh, clearly Magnus would anyway play on. So it's uh, it's not really making uh, much of a difference. So king g3. But now g3. can you activate the rook, rook e8, to, to check from the back? Can we? Can we? I mean, I'm I'm a little bit afraid to get an active move. I feel like you know I'm now very <laughs> stable, but if I move forward, it might be oh, it might now, be a mistake. Now that is a an active move. Yeah, rookie one was the rookie six was. But, but now B three, so. now B three, B three is coming. He's got to watch out for B three. Oh, he's moved back. Oh, we could. Is this a repetition? No, rook B six. Rook B six. Yeah, yes. Rook B six. I thought we were going to see a strange repetition there. <laughs> a rook b6, yeah. But at least one of the rooks has had to go back. Yeah, rook yeah. b3. Yeah, but look at this knight on c2. So nice because the rook on h4 is not, not able to join. The, I mean, the, the, the rook is kind of nice on h4, but at the same time, he's not, uh, not able to finish uh, white's position off. Yeah, now that rook... Can it the rook on e2? Can that activate to, to attack the pawn on b4? So if yeah, there it comes. And that can hassle the king and, and then maybe switch around to attack the pawn on b4. Wow, fan, a fantastic defense from, from Hari Krishna. I yeah, I felt that Magnus will play like this. Yeah, rook d6. Now it was the time to give up ah. the pawn and, and try to create some play against White's king. Well, knight b4 covers the, the the d3 square, but... Yeah, but knight b4, then probably rook, uh, rook b6 was possible. Oh, that's true. Uh, now knight b4, because there's a check. Rook f8 check first. Okay, now the checks might run out. Okay, this looks serious now, with rook d3 check coming. Yeah, look, this check is a very big stat. Yeah, look, a check. According to computer, this is almost like a decisive mistake. Yeah, now king f7, look, this check is a threat. Mm. And the king on g3 runs into any kind of f5, f4 threats. You, you can't block on, on e3. It looks like it's cracked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is what I was worried about, that if white in time trouble makes one active move, and and gets out of his so-called uh, 
nice defensive setup. Then and in, in blitz game, yeah, if you lose your setup, you can just uh, lose everything. Yeah, it looks looks like it could have gone. Yeah, now no. it, it feels Which... the, the pawn on HC is lose getting lost. And then with Rook H2 check, I mean, this is impossible to survive. Yeah, suddenly now both Blacks looks uh, will participate in the attack. There is harmony. Okay, which, the, which way do you take, though? Okay, like this. You think like this, so Rook B4? Feeling-wise, I wanted to take like this, but... Yeah. Rook B4, yeah. I, I can see the eval bar. Rook H2. Just, I think it's a, it's a complete wipeout, but... Uh, oh, okay, King F1. King F yeah, I mean, I'm forcing you at least <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks, I have this check, I have another check, and I don't know exactly, but Magnus played another move, so let's let's return. Yeah, everything looks promising, but not clear how it's winning. Yeah, Magnus goes F5, F4, setting F3 check, and also Rook G3 check. Rook G3, yeah. Rook G3 as well. Yeah, Rook F2, and Rook H3, yeah. I mean, this, this is what I was hoping for, yeah, that once I connect the rooks, I feel like it should be should be kind of automatic win. Yeah, there could be a nice trick as well with throwing f3 in at some point. Okay, well the b4 knight. Yeah, and look, is the checkmate. Wow. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's what yeah. Magnus calculated. Oh, yeah, that's little move f5, f4. Yeah, finally also getting access to the east square. Wow, very nice. Okay, that I mean that was a fascinating game. Uh, be really interesting to see the critical moment when Hari uh, cracked, basically. But but we it, have to move to some other game now, which is still in progress. Hang on, it's Lekwang VM against the Prague. It's the only game that is still in progress. Oof. What? Wow. There's a, there's I can see Black has a lot of checks. <laughs> Lot of checks, but at the same time, white also seems to be quite harmonious, yeah. Because queen d5 will always be a nice, uh, yeah. First, you come back, you collect the g3 pawn, and then you start, and then queen f3 will also appear as a. Oh, uh, yeah, but watch out for stalemates in this position, by the way. Yeah, if you still king... have you still have the e6 square. Yeah, I wonder whether we can somehow arrange this. Okay. King f4. Yeah, it feels like it, it feels like white should just win this. Yeah, collects the pawn. And now the king will start to march back against checks. To, and then finally somewhere the queen will intercept. Yeah, probably. But okay, yeah, so queen e1 check, yeah, black will keep on harassing, yeah, on, on this diagonal. And so now king f, ah, king h3, ah, he, he can, ah, and then rook g3, then it might be just simple win. Yeah, rook yeah. g3 and queen g2, yeah, I mean, king h2, and uh, we are covering everything. Yeah, and then okay. rook g3, queen g2, that's the, that's the yeah. block. This, this is a prudent way to play because it gives the king a little bit of room, so it avoids... I mean, I couldn't quite see a stalemate trick, but yeah, this is absolutely over now. Queen g2. Yeah, wow. yeah this, this actually... Yeah, because I was thinking that my king journey and the other... Yeah, plug designs. King journey on the other side somehow was not, not really effective. Then all these checks were working. Wow. So it looks like... Let me see. I think... Yeah. Games are over, so let me just give a quick recap. We, I, I would, I would really like to go back to the game uh, Duda against Navarra to see because we had that really interesting, very closed Berlin position. Do you think we could switch to that? Because I'd like to see that's checkmate. Let's let's see how uh, Jan Krzysztof did this because this is a fascinating position. I love these kind of closed positions. Yeah, he opted for knight f five. You opted for knight f5, king b8, yeah, everything on the continent, and the knight g7. Kind of a nice dis destruction, yeah, now 
queen move to ah because now already he's threatening to take on g5 and the f6 pawn is hanging yeah so that's the problem for so black black can't move the bishop back then simply takes and of course black wants to take with the pawn on with the h pawn but it runs into queen takes f6 at the end yeah well th this is a far simpler solution than the kind of things we were toying with but let's yeah yeah so that's why black played queen e7 takes takes now e g5 and black was forced to take fg and now i guess i am rook a6 wow Ooh, very sharp very nice very simple way of playing yeah it's interesting that you know that black's position cracked so quickly actually yeah this this knight knight f5 knight g7 was a key yeah very key nice motive. and then what happened was there some intrigue or ah yeah because it's not not the end because f2 pawn is hanging F2 pawn is hanging, rook takes e5, rook e2, knight d5, rook takes c2. It almost feels like black collected the most important pawns, so now white's pawns are falling, but the g pawn is, is too strong, and also this knight on d6 is, is a terrible piece. Rook b2, check. Rook g7, rook b3, rook c7, king a6, rook this. Yeah, everything comes with tempo, and still there is this very disturbing g pawn and after 98 rook e7 knight d6 knight c7 check <laughs> we end up in this beautiful final position in fact there is rook c7 checkmate and knight a7 checkmate mm. just to show how powerful white's position is but very nice technique from young Christoph. yeah one, one wonderful technique and also actually we did beat uh, rapor so he took revenge okay i believe that uh, richard is the one who can say that you know what those those games in belgrade were much much more important but i think that vidit is super happy yeah because he did this win against rapport for his inner balance yeah to to bounce back after two uh, painful losses okay let me just give a quick recap I, we've only got five minutes till the next game so let me just go through so hans niemann defeated David Anton. Uh, Garwin Jones lost to Jorn van Forest. Um, Lei, uh, Liam Kwang beat Prakin Ananda. We've just seen that. Zhu Wenjun drew with Lei Tingjie. And Vidit beat Rapport. Duda beat Navara. Uh, Hari Krishna lost to Carlson. Eric Hansen lost to Ding Nguyen. So we have three players sharing the lead. We have Lei Kwang Liem. We have Ding Nguyen and Jordan van Forest. Who, those are the only players with, well, six out of six as uh, the players get three points for a win. Whew, and we only had we only had one draw, yeah, between uh, Yu Wen Jun and Lei Ting Jie. All the other games were resultive. resultive. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we're getting lots of fighting chess. Just for my, I'm just curious. Uh, we didn't have a chance to look at Garwin's game against uh, Jordan van Forest. Can, can I just very quickly see what happened there? Some Italian, some classical stuff. Bishop e6, takes, takes. b4, knight h4. I mean, knight h5. So, yeah, this is very typical that if black goes for f takes e6 structure, then black wants to create immediately counterplay on the f file. This bishop on a7, rook on f8, hitting f2. Uh, usually white plays, yeah, rook a2 and then bishop e3. Queen e8, bishop e3, knight f4. Takes, takes, king h2. Yeah, this is the fairly standard one. Yeah, white wants to get g3 and kicking the knight away. b5, g3, knight h5, king g2. Queen g6, yeah, and, and suddenly this white king still feeling a bit uncomfortable with knight f4 coming. Rook e3, ba4. But still, everything seems to be under control. It, I think white should be quite happy here. It, it's funny. I mean, this, this move, b takes a4, um, sort of just sort of feels really anti-positional. I mean... Okay, he has a specific idea with a5, but it looks a bit weird to me. But let's uh, let's see anyway. Yeah, and now this is what you said, yeah, that it creates some counterplay. And in, in rapid chess, of course, all that matters the most is yeah, if, if you get some some easy plan, uh, active easy plan, that's that's what's 
what's the most important? Yeah, D4, Gavin also immediately tries to break the center, making sure that he gets the C5 square under control. But D no, this, this I'm not approving. I mean, D5, Knight D5, I think it's clear that everything that Black wanted is fulfilled, no? This, this Knight on E5 beautifully sitting. Yeah, no, this the knight on h4 is, is a bad piece. Knight on ace is also targeted. White's pawn structure is compromised. I'm I'm not a fan. Yeah, knight fd7. A4. But still, it's it's unclear, of course, but for some, I mean something really extraordinary happened here, yeah. That I mean the whole game looks incredibly complex yeah i mean now it's it's clearly gone very badly wrong for white um the knight on c5 is just a superstar yes yeah and basically that's why gavin fear felt like he needs to go all in yeah with some attack mm. but uh your then probably has calculated everything well because yeah queen h5 checkmate is a threat but knight d7 ignoring everything yeah knight is heading to f6 and in fact this is only one check it's not not made yeah and takes yeah and basically here we, we get the feeling that okay that's, that's just over yeah yeah well we're, we're already at uh the hour we're on the, the top of the hour so we're going straight into round three and i think do we have some we have some moves we already have, we have no definitely. time to breathe just just before we get into the analysis i just want to repeat it um this is a really special tournament this is second of the meltwater champions chess tour events and this is the charity cup and the plague magnus group has partnered with UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, to support, to help children in Ukraine. So if you're enjoying this, if you think you can spare a few quid, then do donate, uh, chess24.com slash donate. You'll, you'll see the link there. Uh, that'll be absolutely fantastic. So we go into round three and on the board, well, we have another of these crazy Knight G5 um positions so how did this vary with yeah now i mean it's incredible that the lighting gf feels like uh, she's ready to repeat yeah it, basically the players don't really have much of a break between the between the runs so it's quite the courage to to be able to repeat and vidit is the one who um, who however deviated with knight f4 because we have been talking about this castle zuki one f5 Knight takes e5, queen f6, madness before. Then the move knight f4 is much more positional. Yeah, knight f4, knight c3. I think this is this is more or less a solid line. Both sides can live with it. Uh, probably it's more or less uh, dynamically balanced. It's more human play than than the previous chaos. I, I, I seem to remember these so, some games where somehow this sort of burns out you know white takes on it manages to take on e5 and black takes a pawn on d3 and somehow there's sort of big liquidation but um anyway we shall see b3 yeah the knight on a5 looks pretty stupid doesn't it yeah that's uh, that's basically the only problem because if this, this knight would be in any other square then black could maybe even fight for advantage yeah but that's the justification from white side that yes okay white has this compromised pawn structure but so white is a pawn up after all. So c5 and knight c6. Yeah, is uh, is a very logical way. Yeah, trying to get c5 and then knight c6 back. But if you push c5, I guess white will try to target this pawn immediately. Yeah, with some bishop a c knight e4. Mm. Okay. Well, listen. We'll we'll yeah. let one unfold. Uh, let's go to where should we head next? Where do you want to head next? Well, let's take a look. I mean, okay, we have Magnus Carlsen against Eric Hansen. We have Dingley then against Hans Niemann. Dingley then Hans Niemann. Okay, also very interesting. Let, let's let's go to that one because we haven't seen much of either of these players over. So Hans Niemann, well, he had a pretty exciting um, first event 
in the Air Things Masters. I mean, what's your what's your impression of him? He's only 18 years old. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I think uh, it it was not entirely successful for him because at some moment he started losing a uh, lot of games in a streak. Yeah, otherwise uh, he was uh, he had also some good runs. Yeah, but at some moment he lost control, and I think this is what. Uh, where he needs experience and this tour, for example, is a fantastic chance Yeah, that he gets the, gets the opportunity to play against this uh, world's best players 15 runs and to learn this that actually you can't lose the momentum. Yeah, if, if you, I mean, you, you have to adjust to this situation when things are going bad, then how do you uh, limit the damage yeah, to survive those one, two runs where you are shaky? Yeah, not to lose because especially with the three-point system, yeah, it, it can be really frustrating that you are getting zero points while the other guys are cashing in and going three, six, nine, and 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 then it can really uh, play on your on your mindset. Yeah. Sharp position. Um, you know these this line of the English where White spins the knight to e three, um, but but Black has all this space. Um, can can black use this, you know, or is that pawn on e4? Is it vulnerable? Um, do, do you have any experience with this position, Peter? Well, I mean, basically, also, this is something that really, really developed in the last one, two years. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible that uh, how many top level games uh, have been suddenly featuring this type of positions and more and more. I think in the previous tour, it was. Uh, Prague, Praga, who played it with the black pieces, and he also played it already in, in Vikanze. But also I remember the first big heavy clash I remember was in the candidates 2020 between uh, uh, Giri against Grischuk. Uh, that, that, that was the game that I first uh, remember, first seeing this line, and ever since we, we see a lot of, lot of developments. I mean, white has two different plans. Yeah, trying to go d4, but it comes at the cost that then uh, black takes on d3, and then you have to decide: do you try with ed and then d4? Yeah, this this kind of stuff, or do you play queen d3, but then your knight on e3 might be misplaced, or do you try some a3 b4 ideas, but they are a little bit slow? Then black has all the time in the world also to to reshuffle his pieces. Uh, there, there were quite a lot of uh, different moves, but I'm not sure if I I recall this 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 knight is three. I think recently we have seen more more of this d4 kind of d4 e d queen d3 stuff. Well, the, the knight e3 has obviously stopped um, hands in his tracks because he had a bit of a think there and, and is now down on time. But he has. It looks like he's just castled. Yeah, he castled him. Yeah. But he's doing okay so far. He's got a it's got a win and a draw. So yeah, very, very important to, to get a good start. We also have some what what else? Okay, so this is a this is a big fight. Everything is still ahead. Uh, we have a clash between Rapport and Duda. So very, very interesting. Uh, and matchup. Richard Richard has repeated this 3G3 move. So this is his homebrew. Um, yeah, he likes this. I remember in, in the Gashimov Memorial, he was also playing a lot of this uh, E4, E5, Knight FC, Knight C6, G3s. Uh, again, we see G6 happen. And black going for D5. In fact, this is now, I think, a direct transposition to something that might happen from the Reti. This is uh, something that let me show what I'm talking about, that if white plays knight fc, because all these transpositions are really fascinating there, that, for example, from Reti, you might get this exact same position, e5, uh, d3, knight f6, knight yeah, c7. Knight, knight, ah, yes, sorry, sorry, e no, no, I mean, no, knight c6, pardon me, yeah, knight c6, e4, and then, for example, if you play something like knight e7, uh, knight f6, e d5, knight d5, knight c3. Things like this mm. can actually lead to the same position. Or if you play rookie one, then castles is a direct transposition already. Yeah, and it's, and and it's a pierce. Basically, it's a reverse pierce. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. Now in modern chess, yeah, there are so many uh, so many transpositions. So 
yeah, it, it came from here. We are getting the same position. Knight c3 takes, takes. Hello, b8. Very typical way of fighting this. You want to go b6, bishop b7. If you get the bishop, the long diagonal, or you get b6 at all, it's uh, very, very stable construction. So, yeah, Richard's move, knight d2, aims to avoid that. Queen d7, yeah, very, very stylish move. Queen d7, it's not a problem to block the bishop because you have a clear plan of going b6, bishop b7. h4, b6, h5, bishop b7. Look, b1, knight d8 on the board. I think black can be very, very happy with the position. Hg6, hg6. Yeah, okay. So but, we have but, but seen it's it. not, you, you say black can be very happy, but I mean, this is entirely playable for white, isn't it? I mean, no, of, see... of course, yeah. But I mean, that the white is not having any advantage. I mean, black can be sure. super satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. Rook b4, wow, rook b4, going rook h4, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's uh, absolutely Richard. Well, this is why we love Richie. He, you know, he finds these ideas absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, if, if he manages, and of course we saw in his first game um, against, oh, it was against Zhu Wenjun, wasn't it? Yes. He managed to pull off this attack on the h5. If he does it again against Yang Shishtov, that will be really extraordinary. Yeah, but also I feel like, okay, here Black's position is not so much more healthy. Yeah? Of course. Healthier than... <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. To, if he pulls this off, this would really be something. I, I would really love to see Jan Shistov's, uh face expression when the rook b4 happened, yeah, because, okay, it looks like, okay, this h4, h5, hg6, you think like, okay, so, okay, you wasted how many, one, two moves, and then, okay, capture, capture, for what exactly? And then rook b1, because I even felt like when, when Richard played the move, Richie played uh, rook b1, I felt like, wow, it, it doesn't really fit together, yeah, that what is this, pushing the h-pawn and then combining with rook b1, what's the point? Exactly then when black has already managed to get b6, bishop b7 in, and now we got an answer, now we got an answer, and I also owe you one thing that why I have some trouble uh, announcing uh, Richard's name, because in Hungary, and Richard is Richard, yeah, so we, we call him Richard or we call him Richie, and then uh, if, if I try to say it in English like Richard, it doesn't come so natural to me because, of course, for us, he's Richie. Oh, okay, well, then we, we'll stick with Richie. That's good to know. So Ri Richard. Richard, yeah. In Hungarian, it's Richard. I mean, Rapport Richard is his uh, yeah. name. We'll, we'll, we'll go with Richie. That sounds Richie. good to me. Exactly. I think that's, that's more internet than everybody's happy. Yeah, that's good. Well, we, we can see them on the screen there. And, well... Yeah, we have. Yeah, look at this. Look at look at look at Richie now. I mean, he has just played h5, h h4, h5 takes. Look before, and he's leaning uh, back like nothing is happening. You know, like <laughs> I'm the most bored person on earth. But believe me, that this is just uh, just just fake. I mean, he's tricking his opponent. <laughs> I mean, I assume they can. Can they see each other? Yeah, I mean, if you want, you can see your opponent. Uh, I when I played in the Legends and it was my very first uh, and and uh, only experience, I didn't exactly know because when I was looking at my opponent, I felt like I'm getting distracted. Finally, I I just uh, closed it. I I did not want to see anyone, just the board. Yeah, I understand that completely. Well, we've probably looking like an exchange of queens, and yet unless. Can you whip off that A2 pawn? Wow, but uh, against I, I Richie, think, um, against Richie, I mean, imagine you are sitting yeah, yeah, opposite yeah. Richie. Do you, <laughs> do you still consider this move? Well, do you know, considering that you could, after you take on A2, then you can switch and take on C2, and that really completely destroys black's pawn so yes, he's got to be looking at it he's got to look at it oh but i mean i see this king on g8 i mean my first first reaction would be of course some trade of queens and then how do i protect my e5 pawn yeah because that's i think the the trick that after queen fc knight takes fc if you play f6 it's not such a happy choice yeah then mm. might break with d4 and then bishop on g7 will be Ugly and and knight c six rook c four and and that yeah. rook comes into play again. It's just fantastic how 
this rook actually plays a quite a significant role in the game. Yeah, so I have I have a move like rook e8, trying to be flexible, but also I'm running into some pins. So uh, very well. I mean, but this is what I also say that Richie is quite universal. Yeah, it's not only about attack, but he knows that you know what black is centralizing his queen with d5. So I cannot be premature let, that I let this queen stay so beautiful in the center and I try to dream about some attack which is not happening. No, he was ready to attack if the circumstances are like that. But after queen d5, he immediately switches to, to something different. Okay, so come on, Peter. We've got to look at queen takes pawn. Let's, let's just do it. Let's see. So what's he going to do? What, knight e4 or what? Well, knight e4 is very tempting, but then I let my rook out. So maybe rook h4 first. Okay. Let me go to cage for them. Well, I'm not quite sure what the... I mean, 94, I suppose, is coming, but that could be met by f5. Okay, so I won't take on c2 yet. Let me just play a, a sensible move. Let me just go 96. 96. Yeah, but I can also maybe just play something like knight c4, target the e5 pawn, not go for direct, but in long terms, yeah, because I also have some bishop h6 ideas trading the, I mean, long terms, it can be still very dangerous. Yeah, but then, then if I take on c2, okay, I'll just, just, I will play totally directly, just take on c2. Yeah, take let's on c2. let's so find out. Well, the only reason why I can't really find out because uh, they already traded on FC and I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we are analyzing some ghost position. Sure. Yes. Anyway, li listen, li let's, let's go to the game then. Yeah, okay, takes, takes. Okay, then uh, white is very, very slightly better. It's, it's not an easy spot for, for black now. We already discussed that the pawn is hang on e5. And it also gives us the chance to move to some other game because, okay, this is now an end game, yeah? Yeah, but, but just before we leave, just look at those clock times. Richie has 14 minutes remaining and Jan Krzysztof, six and a half minutes. So that is a huge time advantage. Really yeah, huge. Huge and also, I mean, a very, very unpleasant spot that how do you really protect this, this pawn? Even there is a desperate way of... Playing c5, it's it's not a move that I really want to play in this structure, but c5 and then get the knight to c6, it gives me some stability. Maybe actually I will go with c5, yeah, on the board. C5. Because, okay, if I get knight to c6, then, then basically I'm kind of very solid. The, I'm actually looking instead of playing rook e4, so actually rook h4 and doubling and bishop h6. Yes, I think that that's very, very principled, but I, I don't see finally also then, then where is the big problem. I mean, okay, rook h4, so let's go knight c6. Now, without the queens, I don't feel that I'm going to get mated and then, okay, I will survive somehow, hopefully. Uh I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah, but okay, White has White has some small but but nasty initiative. It's it's not so easy because I would really love to play f6 against bishop a6, but then I'm weakening the seventh rank. Uh, then, yeah, bishop, are... bishop h6 anyway. Bishop h6. Yeah. Okay, here can I take and then go for king g7, rook h8? Okay, so rook. Um, yeah, so once the rook goes back, then f6 anyway hold. yeah now now it, now it's fine now it's yeah. basically fine yeah yeah no fair enough all right okay let's, so let's let's, let's 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 move on let's um let me see which one haven't we looked at yet um let's well, we haven't we haven't seen magnus at all yeah Okay, let's go to Magnus. And, and let's not forget that Eric Hansen sensationally beat Magnus in the previous uh, event. So I can imagine how motivated Magnus is. And, and no e4. This time c4 from Magnus. Just very quickly to see. So English opening. d5, this reverse dragon. Magnus has a lot of, lot of experience in this. 
of course txt i mean bishop g5 six bishop tx on b6 b5 now it's always so difficult sometimes computer says that it's perfectly fine for black allowing this bishop b6 cb6 but if if it goes badly it can also lead to some almost lost structure so always very tricky i feel like in the game is what happened is is in white's favor this looks wonderful for white knight d6 knight b6 knight b5 queen a4 and we have the current position black black seems to be doomed i mean a5 pawn is uh, falling black's bishop on f8 is not really participating i mean white has this lovely lovely harmony of his pieces and this dc dc is the pawn structure covering all the squares it's 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 just wonderful what's magnus magnus looks a bit tired <laughs> <laughs> a huge yawn there. I love it. We've got the the air things stats there. I'm not quite sure what these mean, by the way. I think the the least uh, the less is the better. Yeah. You mean that the? I mean your the numbers the 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 the, the CO two level needs to oh. be lower. Yeah. That that's then you have a better air. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Okay, I'm with you now. Um, so yes, looking. Yes, Magnus has got a, a green circle around his air quality, whereas uh, Eric, he looks like he's uh, yeah, he's in the danger zone there, not just on the chessboard. His environment as well. Okay, interesting stuff. Yeah, but I think that if you are having a bad position, you anyway tend to generate also more heat, no? Because then you are also so angry and so frustrated. While if if you are having a good position, then you are totally in chilling mode. I think it might also affect the surroundings, yeah, as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's have a look at the position. So the knight is attacked. This much I know. So what can I do about that? Um, so if the knight goes back to c7, then simply taking on a5 with the queen looks looks fine. Uh, yeah, you know, he jumped, he jumped knight cc. He probably Eric feels like okay, the position is met, he needs to create some, but okay, queen c2. I'm I'm not even interested about this pawn. This pawn is not running away. I I, sp I suppose d the d3 pawn was hanging. I guess that was the issue. Yeah, with the knight on c3, yeah. Then, yeah then exactly. yes. Yeah, but so, I mean, for example, here also something like okay, look, look, B one is also a candidate move. But in that case, it, it could, yeah, I think Rook A B one and the A three pawn was hanging off the extreme. Yeah, Rook Rook B one is important. Yeah, yeah, this is important. That knight on B six does a does a lovely job of controlling the rook on it on B eight, covering the A eight and C eight squares. Yeah, king h8, but now it also gives me the chance of going knight d5, bishop d5, rook b5. Isn't this just gorgeous? I mean, I, I feel like, you know, such structures might be incredible, but maybe there is no need. But just uh, my excitement was that this is looking incredibly beautiful because any kind of bishop takes c4, even d takes c4, and then putting the bishop on d5, I guess it's kind of strategically almost winning. Trade on g2, then good knight versus bad bishop also looks fantastic, and the pawn on a5 is hanging. Uh, very tempting option, but as I said, maybe there is even something else. There is no need for this, but it already shows that, yeah, white is in total control. Yeah, I mean, I guess black has to choose which of those positionally poor positions he, he heads for, and, and yeah, it, it's not, not a pleasant one. But yeah, Magnus has has options, which is nice. Rook, uh, let me see. Well, on one side, it's Rook. nice to have options, but sometimes when you have a good position, it's much better to have only one and not waste any time on on uh, deciding which one to choose. Yeah, I mean, Rook B5 straight away. Yeah, but then Knight takes B6, and then I have to take with the Knight. Yeah, that's... Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, but then I feel like maybe black can somehow sacrifice this pawn and get some coordination. But I don't know. Like rook e7, yeah, for example, rook e7. I'm trying to go rook c7, you go rook c1, yeah. You yeah, why start. not? Yeah, yeah. Seems, seems okay. 
Yeah, and, and look at this knight dominates my both rooks. So this, this also explains why Magnus doesn't really hurry capturing uh, on d5. But he's having a think. It's clock time, seven minutes each, roughly. Listen, we'll we'll leave leave Magnus to, to ponder that one. Let's let's move on to another position. Let's go to how about Pragnananda against Ju and Jun? Yes, wow. I mean, I'm seeing a pawn on c6. It looks like uh, it should be a technical win for, for white. On the other hand, okay, at least black has a kind of a block. What? I felt like maybe black will move the knight immediately to c7, blockading this c pawn. Yeah, I'm just counting the pawns. It's actually even pawns, although yeah. it feels feels like white is about two pawns up, but it's actually, yeah, it's only, it's actually even. But yeah, it looks horrible. Yes. Um, but yeah, as you say, the knight on c7 is is actually not bad because it, it looks at the, the pawn on b5 and the bishop on f on e8 after f6 does find some freedom. So it's actually not totally clear. It's obviously good for white, but it's not so easy to actually put this one away. Yeah, not immediately, but I mean in long terms, then there are basically yeah. no scenarios which I see that uh, can really give black surviving chances. Yeah, even if white just plays very slowly, uh, somewhere then the, the b6 pawn is also weak. Yeah, if the rooks are very passive, white white has all the control and all the advantage. So it, it's such a such a painful look at uh, looking at black's position that I feel that we, we should just conclude that it's wonderful for white, but we should move on. It, it yeah. hurts. Let's go to... Uh, uh, hang on, I see some tactics. Uh, David Navarro against Hari. Uh, the, uh, ah, okay, now it's... White is winning a pawn and probably winning the game, but what I wanted to highlight that this uh, position caught my eyes. After Queen C5, Rook B8 check, Rook C8, and there was this lovely tactic with Queen D4. Ooh. I mean, we don't really see a Rook on B8 in these structures very often, no? Hmm. Nice, <laughs> nice cross pins. Very nice. Pin, yeah. Pins on the back rank, pins on this diagonal. Very nice. Yeah, so, and, and then here he won the pawn, yeah, because uh, rook c7 kind of felt obligatory and then takes, 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 rook d7, and it seems like a winning rook end game. Yeah, g5 played, it's the only way to, to break something, but I mean, white's king is also on the right side of the board. Yeah, okay. So David Naval has all the chances to, to strike back after this uh, painful loss to, to Dura in the previous round. What else do we have? Wow, tactics! Tactics! David Anton against uh, Gavin Jones. Last move after knight d7, after rook d7, knight d7, knight takes e5. If it works, it's, it's fantastic. Wow, queen e5. Now, okay, just bishop a6, but hang on. So what? Yeah, Gavin will have to suffer again to try to defend this mm. pawn down position. But it's this one looks too regular. Yeah, and it's a it's a healthy pawn. Yeah, just maybe take and then go bishop c4. Mm. Wow, tactics. Yeah, I mean it, okay, it looked that's... like it's a solid strategical positional play. But yeah, chess game is so tactical. Yeah, you have to watch out for any kind of. I think uh, Gavin is very, very upset of, of falling into this trick. Yeah, because it looks like it, it's a very solid position, and then all of a sudden he fell into this wonderful trick with the idea: bishop takes e2, knight takes d7, and the bishop is hanging. Hmm. But, but perhaps he should have gone in for that because it, I wonder whether the opposite colored bishops or maybe just the port, the queenside pawns perhaps are too weak. Yeah, and also white has this lovely pawn structure. Yeah, it, it feels yeah. like, okay, with this wonderful dark squared bishop. You also don't, I, I understand his choice because after all, uh, white has some disharmony in his, uh, in his camp. Yeah, the, the C3 pawn is hanging and the H2 pawn is hanging, but... White's move queen d2 might be a very, very clever way of getting the harmony. Okay, and what happens if taking on f2? And yeah, king takes f2, knight c5, yeah, you have then, to. Then, then h2 hangs and the bishop hangs. 
Yeah, but uh, the problem is that some, uh, yeah, bishop c4, and if you take, then then queen d8, queen e7 might, or something will be decisive, I guess. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. Okay, you still have queen f4 there at the end. It's not true what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that there should be a way to... So queen well, h2 played. He's taken it. Let's find out. Let's find out. Wow, hang on, actually, yes. Queen e7, queen f4, g3, queen d2, and I'm moving. I can I can do this moonwalk, maybe, yeah? Just queen e7, queen f4, g3. You have to give a check. I go king g1, for example, you give a check. I go king g2, and I'm hiding on it. Ah, but then you have queen d7 check. Okay, okay, then it's not so simple. Because <laughs> I, I wanted to hide like this, and suddenly you have queen d7 check. Game okay. on. Okay, look, go back. Just go back because that was very close. A uh, queen d4 check, of course, yeah, and queen heads to f6. Yeah, so simple, yeah, but so effective. Brutally strong. Uh, yeah. That could you, be the one. Yeah, forces you to go f6 and then you get checkmated. With yeah, but queen d8. Yeah, queen d5, queen oh, d8. Queen d5, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Devastating, yeah. That's a tough one. Garwin's in trouble. Yeah, he doesn't look comfortable. That's a tough one. Okay, listen, let's let's move up. Let's let's go back to Magnus's position. See see if we've had any progress there. Yeah, definitely. What? Did, yeah, very interesting to see how did Magnus react to King H eight. He spent what H four. Wow, it basically indicates mm. that I have such a wonderful position, and you don't have a next move. Please make up your mind. H4 takes, takes, queen d6, rook b5, rook d8, bishop e4, g6, queen a4. Okay, still looking very, very nice for white. But at least, I mean, I feel like, okay, with f5, bishop g7, there is some intrigue, yeah, now on, on the dc pawn, and also finally this terrible bishop might get active. Yeah, h4, very interesting move. Magnus now down to three and a half minutes. Eric, five minutes. So, well, we know that Eric is such an experienced online player. So we shouldn't rule him out of this one. Not just yet. Well, as you as you mentioned, I mean, really, the only move that disrupts White's position here is to play f5 to drive away the bishop and then d3 is hanging. So we need to examine this. I mean, is he just going... Yeah, I'm going to go back to g2, for example. Not, not, not bishop d5? Uh, I have... Yeah, well, I'm... You, I can, yeah, maybe bishop d5, but I... I can, I can sense some hesitancy there. <laughs> yes, well, because I'm, I'm temple, simply temple not, why, Peter. not not that happy of uh, of what Magnus has done. Yeah, I, I wanted not to give Black any kind of chances, and I feel like yeah, Black Black got more than he deserved. But it still look, looks very comfortable for White. No? Yeah, no, Bishop D5. I, I actually, for some reason, I was already thinking about this Bishop G7, F5, and so on. I, I forgot about this uh, that it might be very effective. Yeah, F5, Bishop D5. Because actually, after, well, for example, exchanging on d5 and queen c6, actually. You I might mean, go e4, no? Exactly. You just. I was just wanting to cement it. And actually, it's black's king that could be in serious trouble here. Okay, I still at least have bishop c5. That's that's the good news. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm losing the a5 pawn, but okay, if I get bishop on c5, I'm already breeding. Hmm. Knight on d5 looks wonderful, though. Yeah. Well, I might sacrifice it. Okay. In in any case, yeah. Also, very very tough uh, choice now for for Eric. Yeah. That uh, do you do you weaken with f5? If yeah. if there is bishop d5, then already f5 doesn't look so tempting. But you wanted to instead of bishop d5, you just wanted to play the bishop back to g2 anyway. Yeah, but now that you now that bishop d5 is available, then then of course I I just. You know, I was, yeah, f5 on the board anyway, and I'm expecting, yeah, bishop d5 on the board. It's logical. 
very, very logical. But okay, this bishop d5, knight d5, queen c6 might be a very, very important line. Okay, you also have queen c4, but it's it's a little bit minimalistic. Mm, yeah. It's not, not what you wanted, no? No, absolutely not. No, I just wanted to cement the knight in there. I mean, yeah, of course, it, it, I'm just wondering if Magnus is calculating queen a5 here and trying to make that work. Yeah, this is now on the board. Yeah, queen c6, so we might be finding out what Magnus really has in mind but, but i suppose queen a5 um or oh, maybe then, just play b6 and oh, no, no, and then also rook a8 eight. no rook i a don't eight. i have rook, rook a8 yes yes i might be winning some okay let's just show this because it's kind of funny that yeah now no matter where you go i can take and queen c6 bc will protect my rook yeah yeah just to highlight this yeah that captures and protects yeah so okay then e4 looks like the move yeah, but e4, bishop, c5, and I don't think that with little time on the clock, you are happy allowing this. It's, it's already a very messy chess game suddenly, yeah? Well, um, let, let's try and chop things. So, so rook a5. Rook okay, a5. Okay, but I have also some b5 move. I have some B5 move. Mm. I mean, there is a, at least some, some disharmony here. Yeah, maybe I can even just, maybe I can even start with Bishop D4 first. I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah Magnus goes for the minimalistic, but uh, very practical, Queen C4. Yeah, white can never be worse. White can be just simply better and okay, not, not allowing any activity for, for this Bishop. Interesting. Uh, I mean... After the exchange, then rook rook d c eight. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have to be Magnus to to convert this uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I feel that there is something. Yeah, because we are always talking about yeah Magnus Magnus, but uh, yes, Magnus is doing magic things because he always feels that there is something, even if it looks like there is nothing. There is something in the position. And then he's able to do the maximum out of the seemingly nothing. Oh, but, but this by one the way, feels like something. Rook bc8 played. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, trying to keep the trying to keep the tension. Yeah, okay. I it, like this move. Yeah, nice move. But okay, you can you try to play knight b6, and then you take on c4, yeah, or you don't take at all. Much. Yeah, but it, it got messy. Both players down to two minutes and 15 seconds. This is this is now not an easy position for my. I mean, okay, white has some chances, but black black is in the game. Wow, hang on. Okay, we have we have to move to Dingley against Hans Niemann because I feel like uh, some extraordinary things are happening. I mean, how can we even evaluate this position? Two pieces versus rook, some powerful pass pawn. And uh, yes, Dingley then is down to 50 seconds, and Hans Niemann has one minute 50 seconds. Both okay. players low on the clock. I was going to say that the pin is annoying, but actually Ding is preparing to play Queen F3 to, to unpin. And, and once that happens, then White, White's coordination looks really nice. I mean, isn't this just fantastic for White with the bishop on D5? Yeah, well, my feeling was that if White is not losing on the spot, then White might be actually doing really fine. Uh, but, uh, okay, I, I cannot be sure. Yeah, Bishop B2, forcing things. Yeah, it's also a very nice move. Yeah. So, let me see. Yes, and now then the C-pawn starts to become a threat again once the bishops are exchanged. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So yeah, but, I mean, I was just looking at bishop, bishop b2, queen b2, and then queen f3, but then c3, of course, and that's that's serious. Yeah, that's a completely different story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah wow, bishop b2, a wonderful move. And Dingley then down to 20 seconds. It's uh, le Let's not forget, it's a clock, and when you have little time on the clock, and such moves can have a very, very big impact. Down to 10 seconds. Maybe, maybe queen c2. 
Oh, no, there's a rookie one check. Oh, I, I wanted Queen C2, Bishop C1, Rook C1, but then there's rookie one check I forgot about. Yeah, winning and and England and did did he move because actually he ran out on, I know he moved yeah with he actually he opted for queen c two. Oh, maybe maybe after bishop takes c one he's just going to move the bishop on move the bishop yeah or can he can he actually take the pawn? But I mean with with so little time on the clock to play this position, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah so bishop takes c one and you want to take on c four yeah. Queen C4 is captured. Oh, Queen C4. Very he's, cool. He's hinting on F7 as well. <laughs> that's that's not a hint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But Rook C8, yeah, I mean, uh, not not afraid of, of this uh, bishop takes F7 check. Where does the king move? Yeah? Okay, king H8 is the natural move. King F8 is the ultra ambitious trying to win the bishop. And now, now Niemann is the exchange up. So ding. Yeah, King H8. And the bishop on C1 is actually secure. He's an absolute... Okay, White clearly hopes to, for example, for some scenario like Rook E7, Bishop F5. I mean, bishop e6, and then protecting with f5 or some knight f5 jump, rook d8, queen takes b7 on the board, collecting some pawns, but I'm not happy losing the control with, with the queen. Queen a4. Yeah, and, and white's king, that queen better stay on the long diagonal, otherwise white's king is in desperate trouble. Yeah, and, and also now already rook b8, then hitting the b5 pawn, the f4 pawn is hanging as well from the bishop. Yeah, bishop e6 on the board. Yeah, as you say, rook b8 here. Yeah. Nice move. Yeah, and, and double attack. b5 pawn and f4 pawn are, mm. pawns are hanging. Nice. So ding could be in trouble here, but the, the bishop on c1 is hanging. So maybe you have time just to... Where can we play the queen? You played queen e4. Hmm. I suppose you could come to, to g5. After the exchange of queens, that knight, knight coming to g5 is actually a bit annoying for black. Well, now it's a big question. Yeah, that if rook d4, then you have queen e5. That's that's why rook d4 would be... I know, yes, rook d4, queen e5, because queen b5, the rook on f1 is protected just to highlight this, that yeah, after rook d4, queen e5 is possible hitting the rook, and queen b5, queen takes d4, queen f1 does not work, the knight protects, so... Very, very important. He goes queen a3, My goodness. bishop c4. To play this position with so little time when, you know, the pieces are sort of floating a little bit. I mean, bishop, at least bringing the queen back to e4, I mean, there is some kind of coordination. But the bishop on c4, it doesn't have an anchor. It doesn't, it's not protected. So it's, it's a curious position. Yeah, bishop b2. But also, I mean... Now that uh, Hans Niemann is down to 30 seconds as well, if suddenly somehow White could get coordination, then mm. uh, he could get real practical chances. His problem is the momentum, yeah? That how to create threats, how to coordinate. Knight f5 on the board. Bishop on b2 is now a lovely piece, yeah? Protecting everything along the long diagonal. Yes, I'm wondering where that... Oh, queen h3. That's, that is a shot in the dark. That is... Such a tricky move, looking at g4, also eyeing up the, the rook on f1. The, the good random move, queen h3. I really like that move. Yeah, I mean, we, in, in time trouble especially, yeah, it's, uh, it, it has very big effect. But okay, now the bishop on b2 is hanging, bishop f6, yeah, and also the queen stops any kind of g5, yeah, because the knight on f5 is hanging. Knight g3 comes back. Yeah, and the queen is just about safe enough. Rookie eight. Rookie eight. Yeah, good move. You got it. Black has to try and disrupt here. Yeah, queen f3. White doesn't want to trade queens because his bishop on c4 is too loose. That's a nice move, rook c8, because yeah. that rook might come down to c3 to hassle the queen again. 
Yeah, and in fact, now some Luxis Eductics GC are hanging in the air. Mm. But okay, we... Luxis, I'm going to take on E8. I gonna... No, but then G4 is hanging as well. Yeah, it's. Look, the G5. Still the same. Look, CC, look, take G3. That is this idea. I mean, can look, you, C3 can, can and you go for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, he goes, look, D2. Ah, it's checkmate. Okay. Then, <laughs> then there is nothing to talk about. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That is it. That is it. Yeah. Game over. That is an absolute killer. Well, absolutely fair play. I think Hans Hans has played a tremendous. Well, that last phase. I mean, who knows what was going on earlier? But that last phase of the game, okay, he he can take and rookie two, and that's it. A rooksy one, mate. Wow, he's a rook up, and that's game over. Ding has resigned. Well, that was a tremendous finish. Absolutely, yeah, incredible. Very nice initiative. Right, what's we need to check out the other games? What is going on? Is there a games? Still in progress. Well, Magnus, uh, Magnus is the game still in progress against Eric, and uh, he's pawn up, but it's some kind of a very strange pawn up position because Black has managed to fix uh, all of White's pawns on the dark squares, so his bishop is very effective. Yeah, he might if the bishop, for example, gets somehow to a5 and then always threatens bishop e1. I'm not sure that with this isolated c pawn, White will be able to. Really coordinate winning chances. How do you... Yeah, bishop c7 on the board. The bishop is aiming towards a5 and e1. And if you have to come back with knight to cc, then always black will play king c5 and you'll get an active king. Okay, well, here's a plan. So if king b... We put the king on b3. We put okay. the knight on bishop c3. A5. Knight on c3. Okay, king c5. And g4. Uh -huh. Okay, but what happens if I don't panic, which is not easy, but let me <laughs> I was going to say, that's not in the rules of the game. <laughs> yeah, so okay, let me, but yeah, it's, this is this is a big achievement, yeah. Then, but I, I, maybe I should play h5, but h5 weakens the g6, but maybe it's not important. Maybe it's much more important to have bishop e1, but this is, this is a tough, very tough decision. I can't. Yeah. I can't play a move like h5. It's just against my nature. But uh, okay, so bishop c7, Magnus helps me and goes king d1. So I don't have to answer this question yet. Maybe Mag maybe Magnus is going to put the the king all the way back to g2 and play play f3. Actually, why not? Yeah, but di didn't he come from there? I mean, he yeah, this was the position. He. Maybe he just changed his mind. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, he, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, because, of course, black can only sit tight. Yeah, that's why Eric keeps the bishop on e5, yeah, to keep control of the gc pawn. Of course, yeah, Magnus can go king f1, king g2, and then go f3, yeah? Yeah, but, but, but why not anyway? I mean, surely that's what you want to do. Yeah. Just to, to get rid of the, the, the weakness on f2. He's doing it. Yeah. He is doing it. Now, whether this is a big achievement and, you know, maybe it just leads to a big exchange of pawns. There we okay. are. Okay, he, he provoked the h5. <laughs> he provoked the h5. Now he will maneuver the king back. Yeah, exactly. Now no more f3. I was actually thinking that you have to wait for f3, then take and then go h5, for example. Uh, that, that could be maybe a possibility. But yeah, now after h5, now, of course, Magnus will... Move his king back and then somehow try to activate the knight. Yeah, target this this g6 pawn. Okay, Eric then. apparently believing that it's anyway kind of a fortress. Yeah, it could be because after knight d5. Okay, so we're we're imagining the position with king on b3 and the knight on c3, and then the knight goes to d5, and then. Bishop but hang on, sorry to interfere, but actually, how do you get this? Because now black waits with bishop b4. Oh. How do I activate my king? Yeah, and Magnus will have to go for f3. Yeah. But uh, but then basically it did not matter if Eric started with h5 or not. 
So basically, it looks like this is going to lead to an exchange of pawns, and then just bishop c7, or, oh, okay, he's played bishop c7 anyway. Perhaps it doesn't make much difference. King f2, and then, oh, Magnus has traded. Yeah, traded, and yeah, Eric is very pretty, and now bishop e5, yeah, that was his concept, yeah, that's why he always kept the bishop on, on e5 now. White's knight is stuck. King g2, bishop f6. Yeah, so white gonna go king h3, push g4, get rid of one more weakness, but still the h pawn remains as a weakness. True. So it's look, looking like actually a big trade of pawns and actually uh, black seems to be okay. Yeah, and this knight is dominated, yeah? Mm. Very, very cool defense from Eric, actually. Yeah, very cool. But I feel like there was a moment for, for Magnus when he had this king on c2. He could have tried to activate the knight and then see what happens. But, but then he wanted to reshuffle, but he was not, not able to reshuffle already. And yeah. now, now what, what is his idea? He, has, he wants to bring the king back because he has to come back with king to d2, which allows bishop g3, but then he wants knight c3. Bishop takes h4, knight takes e4, protecting the pawn and somehow dominating this bishop. Yeah, that's, that's Magnus's idea. Yeah, to, to go king e2 and after bishop g3, go knight c3. Oh, tricky. Yeah, Magnus. Magnus is Magnus. Yeah, getting the pawn to g5 was essential for this plan. The king gets to d2 and bishop e5, knight c3, bishop g3. He, he will be in, I mean, the line I'm talking about is this, this, this. Now already black, white is starting to go knight c3, so probably you have to go for this. But this one already looks promising for white. Bishop is dead. It's, it's amazing how the king, black's king, is still dominated, still can't break through the barrier. But maybe also I don't have any winning attempt, yeah, because uh, nothing really moves. And if your king is activated, then already bishop can come to e1, and there is also still the h pawn. Very, very interesting endgame. It's, uh, of course, Eric Dantuna, 10 seconds on the clock. I guess it will be impossible to defend this. Yeah, king d6 played. Now knight b6 might just win. No, knight b6, knight d5, knight f4. Ooh. Yeah, that looks serious. Yeah, practically speaking, also just very, very pleasant from white side. Yeah, if you have this option, knight b6. Yeah, it's on the board. Yeah, king c5, knight d5, and this is the dream scenario. Taking on g6 and you win. Wow. I mean... Magnus, is, he looks like he's going to do it. We, we only have one other game in progress, and that's Rapport against Duda. So how's Richie Yeah, now, now Magnus is winning, so we can move. Yeah, now after King yeah. C5, Knight D5, Knight F4, there is no intrigue. Basically, Eric has to design. Wow, uh, Magnus, Magnus does it again. I've just seen Rapport Duda has actually just ended in the draw just ah, okay. seconds ago. Let's just check that very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's a draw. So we can, we can stick now to this game till the end. It, it will, okay. in my opinion, finish quite quickly. Knight F4 and... Bishop h4, g6, followed by knight takes h5, and basically resignable. Looks like game over. Wow, yeah. This again shows how tough uh, is, is a chess game. Yeah, Eric was putting up incredible defense. Yeah, and that's it. 1-0. And then just one mistake there, and the clock was ticking down, and, and then... Magnus find this way of bringing the king to d2, setting knight c3, and, and Eric had no time to adjust to the new situation. Well, we've seen him do it hundreds of times before. Extraordinary. So all games are over in round three. Let me just give a quick recap. So Ding lost to Hans Niemann. Magnus, as we've seen, has just beaten Eric Hansen. Draw in Navara Hare Krishna. Draw in Rapport Duda. Lei Tingjie lost to Vidit. Pragnananda beat Ju Wenjun. Uh, Fun Forest drew with Lei. And David Anton defeated Garwain Jones. So at the top, we have actually five players sharing the lead with seven out of nine. Just a quick recap that 
Uh, three, you get three points for a win. So we have Lei Kuang Liem on seven, Jorn van Forest, Hans Niemann Vidit, and Magnus Carlsen on seven, and just below Ding Liren on six, and so on. You can see the scores there. Whew. <laughs> that round seemed to go very, very quickly. Um, and we have, actually, we have uh, seven minutes until the next round. So what I think we'll do is, uh, Peter, we'll take a short break there. Um, but just remember, this is the Charity Cup. The Plague Magnus Group has partnered with UNICEF, the United Nations Children Fund, to support children in Ukraine. So if you'd like to donate, then please do consider that. It's chess24.com slash donate. And well, that would be fantastic. I've already thrown in a few quid. Um, and yeah, please do if you're having a good time. If you're being entertained, then do consider donating. So we'll see you in about five minutes time. The next game will begin on the hour. So that'll be the final game of today. So we'll take a short break now. See you soon. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Silecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. Spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. It's round four. It's the final round of today in this Meltwater Champions Chess Tour Charity Cup. Already we've had some absolutely fantastic games. I was really impressed with uh, Magnus's speedy endgame techniques. It's incredible how he manages to find these ideas constantly to, to keep the game alive, to, to put pressure on his opponent. And, and Eric finally cracked there. And we have a big game in this round four. We have Ding Liren against Magnus Carlsen, and they should be starting pretty soon. Yeah, Only however, out. there is there is one story that I do remember in Athens Masters that uh, we were looking forward to this game very, very big, Ding Liren versus Magnus Carlsen, and it was also the last game of the day, and we have to talk about this, that actually Chinese players, now not only Ding Liren, but also the two Chinese ladies, Face this big handicap of, of playing at night, yeah, because I think it's already 4 a.m. Chinese time. So it's also big, big pressure on Ding Liren that now what should he do? Yeah, should he really challenge Magnus to a very, very big fight 4 a.m.? Or should he just think like, you know what, against Magnus, getting a point is not bad. I'm gonna catch a sleep and come back tomorrow with, with full force. However, he did that strategy in the in the previous tour and I mean previous tournament and it backfired. So I do feel like maybe this time Ding Liren will have a different approach. Well, let's see that. I mean, maybe they'll start a little bit later because Magnus's game was the last to finish. So ah uh, yes, because I I see already action in all the other boards. Let's let's look at something else then. Let's go to well, you 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 pick a game, Peter. Yes. Okay. Let's let's go to 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 the rapport game. I mean, it's it's why I'm moving now to the rapport game for because Richie plays the same uh, Chigorin line. But I just want to say that how quickly players are adjusting to this situation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Harry has noticed that rapport played the Chigorin against Vidit, and the line that he chose actually worked very nicely for White. So simply no reason to be afraid from the White side. And then he repeats, and Richie, of course, after uh, losing that game, he felt like he needs to change, and he plays this. But what? He started with a5? I mean, isn't this a, a a5? But but now bishop e3, a4, knight bd2, and he doesn't go for knight before at all. He just goes bishop d7. Okay. So bishop d7. Okay, it's the classical position. Yeah, a3. In fact, this is how the line goes. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm also losing my mind already. I haven't looked at Chigorin for, for ages. I think mm -hmm. I had the last game against Akopian in Elista Grand Prix 2008. I think that was my last Chigorin game. And even before that game, I haven't seen Chigorin for like 10, 10 years before. I played this position against Adams in uh, Tilburg 98. So I had a game in 98 and I had a game in 2008, quite quite long time ago. Well, it just shows it's not kind of high fashion, is it? The, the Chigorin for black. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but then the marshal just kind of took over. Yeah, that's, and, that's and then the, the threat of the marshal. Yeah, and if White yeah. is forced to go for anti marshals then the question is, why should you play any of these uh, classical old Spanish lines? You can get a much better version immediately. Mm. Yeah, Bishop D8. This is, this is one of these uh, little ideas uh, and main ideas in this line. Yeah, trying to get Bishop D8 is a super flexible bishop because it still controls the F6 square. Often in this line, if you go, for example, Bishop F8, which is a typical Spanish move, it can be answered by bishop g5 hitting the knight on f6. And by playing bishop d8, you put some pressure on the center, yeah? So white has to watch out for any kind of ed4, timely ed4, so opening up the rook. And if you play, for example, d4, d5, then the bishop is also already wonderful, uh, prepared of going to b6 or to a5. 
And uh, it's typical that after black moves the bishop to d8, then suddenly white simplifies. White goes d5 and tries to use the c5 square. That's very, very typical. Knight e5 takes, takes, and then try to do something with this c5 square. And just for a moment, of course, the black's rooks are split by the by the bishop on d8, but yeah, queen e2, yeah, putting some pressure on the b5 pawn. It's it's very typical. But it um, feels, feels like this, you know, white's advantage, if if anything, is kind of slim because of you know those pawns pressing on the queen side. Yeah, but it's it's very tricky. Usually in this in this line, uh, what I noticed is that either white gets nothing or he gets a serious advantage. Yeah, there is nothing really between because the position is so special. Yeah, if if you get everything what you want with black, then you have zero problems. But if something goes wrong, it's because of the vulnerability of the b5 pawn and the e5 pawns. Yeah, this these two weaknesses. But hang on, this is now a stable position. I fully agree with you. And let's move to the Magnus's game because we got an answer that there will be no short draw whatsoever. It will be a bloody fight. And uh, I think Dingley then understood very well that last time he lost the momentum with that uh, quick draw. And he's also a very principled player. Yeah, He always wants to fight for advantage with the white pieces. And then just giving up with the so-called, yeah, it's already too late. Let's not risk against Magnus approach. It's absolutely not his characteristic. And I'm very happy for him that he chose the way he plays. But also really interesting that Magnus wants to fight and and is playing well a, a, a version of the, well this you could call it a King's Indian Benoni actually it started like an anti Grunfeld with F three but we've transposed to a kind of Benoni position which wow I mean that that is a real risk yeah but this is exactly how it happened in the previous game as well that Magnus offered the chance for for Dingleland to play aggressive. But Dingleton after knight f6, g6, probably he was also caught by surprise from, from Magnus and he opted for g3 and after c6, immediately the game ended up in, in a very solid uh, territory. And this time f3, but of course this case black goes for this, uh, this is typical. With e6 move order or with the c5 move order, no matter it, it leads to the same uh, King's Indian Zemi structures, but by having force white to play d4, d5 immediately, and that's a, a small little twist compared to the Zemish positions that, that come from, from King's Indian. Bishop g5, h6, bishop e6, a6, a4, castles, queen d2, rook e8. Yeah, let's, because maybe not everyone is familiar that why you can't take the pawn on h6, because of knight takes e4 tactics. Yeah, this is old, old theory followed by queen h4 check. And uh, it's, it's working out for black. According to theory, there is no problem. So Dingley then opts for bishop c4. Isn't bishop c4 very unusual? It looks curious to me. I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm, don't claim to be an expert in this line at all. But and then he, now he's gone back to e2. What's that about? You got to explain this to me, Peter. I haven't got a clue. Well, I mean, to, to me, it's clear indication that it's some deep prep. Yeah, it's it's deep prep. Uh, now the point is that once the knight reaches d7. White actually is threatening to go knight h3 and develop the knight because the bishop is not hitting anymore the, the h3 square. Yeah, so that's the justification. Yes, don't you always did. play don't you always play knight e5 anyway? Yes, but probably after knight e5, there are some new new things. First of all, we have to kind of understand what happens if I can I take now on h6. Okay. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Uh, yeah, because now with the bishop on e2, I feel that maybe I'm I'm stopping some tactics, yeah? But knight e4? Yeah, knight e4, and this is a difference, yeah, because queen h4 check g3, you take, I can play knight f6 check. Ah, okay. Because the e-file is blocked, yeah? Very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> so some su super fine, uh, delicate nuance by Dingley then. Right. So, and and the, the the trick is that with the bishop on c8 blocked, then you can play knight h3 to f2, which is, I think that's one thing I remember. That's a very desirable maneuver. Exactly. I mean, how many times we see in the the image that the knight somehow gets to e2, then to g3, then black mm -hmm. pushes h5, h4, then white goes knight h1, and then you are so happy when finally this knight lands yeah. on on f2. 
and you are so relieved, and it's the question, are you in time to get the night to have to, then all is fine. If not, then then you lose the game. Uh, so yes, now night is a big threat. But it, it, this, I mean, this is really subtle. So is this bishop c4 idea, is this new or is this known? Or I, I'm not familiar with the position. Well, I mean, since it seems like even Magnus got surprised, then then I think we can forgive ourselves to be surprised as well, no? Because uh, this probably is some kind of computer preparation. I'm, I'm pretty sure that because it's th these are the things that, for example, computer can come up with. Because for computer, it doesn't matter. You move the bishop to C4 and then you move it back. If if it makes sense for the computer, and if you work with the computer, you notice the idea from computer. You say thank you very much. Okay, uh, you are clever, Mr. Computadora. <laughs> Computadora. <laughs> Okay, really interesting. We'll see how that develops. Listen, let's let's go to um, Ju Wenchun against Jordan van Forest. We haven't we haven't looked at those before. Ju Wenchun, I mean, unfortunately, she's only got one out of nine at the moment. Um, you know, I was hoping that, well, hopefully she she can bounce back because, you know, she she's played extremely well over the last couple of years and. The women's world champion. Um, so far, it's not clicking for her, and she's down on time here. But does white have anything here? Black is ready to break with either c5 or e5, but queen c2. Yeah, I mean, okay, white has a super solid position, and I think this is very, very good news for you and Jun because she's a very nice uh, strategical player. And I think if she starts to get her position, this is, of course, the big, big di difficulty against these guys that normally you never get what where you can really show your strengths. Yeah, the, the, these guys are always shuffling things uh, in a direction that you are not able to get the positions where you are confident and comfortable. But now I feel like she, she got a position that she can be very happy with. There is a backward pawn on, on C7, while also having the move Bishop F in the pocket, which is... Very, very nice to uh, get rid of this active bishop. And once you trade this bishop, then nothing can ever happen to white in the position. And the question is, can I squeeze something out or not? Which is already a very, very pleasant question, I guess. Okay, well, let's let's see. So if I just play in a normal move and play rook fc8. Rook fc8, so okay, let's play rook fc1. Now, my question is, does black have time to push... With e5, not c5, but e5. c5 or e5. Actually, there is also a question if I can... Can, can I play bishop fc or not? Is, is c5 really a threat? It's also a very interesting question, yeah? Because I guess you have... I mean, your idea was to take and go c5, no? Yeah, I'll, yeah. Let's yes, see. so takes, takes, and I wanted to oh, find out what is this, because dc, knight, c5, have some knight b6 jump. Uh-huh. But it's it's not the end of the world, but certainly it is there. We have to examine it. So you have to take. Also, I have some pinning moves like rook ac1 is possible as well. Mm. And it's a bit, but okay, you have knight fd7. Uh, but okay, just also to illustrate, yeah, rook ac1 because uh, that is a pin on c8, so you cannot really capture on a4. Yeah, but okay, rook fc8, knight bc on the board, also very natural, but now, of course, we will see your break with e5, yeah, at some point. Knight bc. If it works, it's, of course, if something lands on c5 and uh, white is able to, to stop the break c7, c5, then, then it's wonderful, but it feels like black should have some dynamic, but how exactly? Well, should we should we try e5? I mean, but white has various things. I mean, one could simply exchange on e5. But, but I, yeah. I would like to jump immediately. Sure, I understand. I'm I'm afraid to give you. I I notice that you are very dangerous with initiative. I want to you know be safe. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, probably bishop d5. Bishop Can d5. I do that? Well, there is a question. If rook a8, what happens? Can mm. I take on a8 or not? 
Rook A8. Rook A8 and uh, I cannot use immediately the. Oh, maybe knight d7 here actually. Yeah, but knight d7, knight d7. Yeah, I, I wanted oh. this, but. Right, b3 hangs. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah, you can. I mean, this was my idea also that here, some it looks like the position is vulnerable. Otherwise, I might have not taken a8, but it, it doesn't really seem to work out. Well, it's gone bishop b4, bishop, bishop d3. b4, bishop d3. Okay. Bishop e4, bishop d3. Well, in any case, it, it feels like uh, Van Forest basically it's very hard for Black to, to generate chances to, to play for a win here. It, it's like, you know, one can imagine this game will either be a very pleasant advantage for White or it will somehow go to a draw. But at the moment, it's a difficult position for Black. I mean, it's uh, slightly unpleasant and uh, very easy play for White. Yeah, there no. is no no problem with the clock. Yeah, this is, I think, very, very important for White. Yeah, that everything is stable. Everything is easy. And there is also the pressure on, on your damn fun for this. Yeah, because when you see that other players, your concurrents have already collected three points against uh, you and June, then you have this uh, feeling like, if I'm not winning, then I'm missing out on something. Yeah, and actually... Thanks to this, there might be also a moment that uh, Jordan Fanfores will not be patient. Yeah, he will try to look for some contra chances to, to try to win the game, which will give uh, White also the chance to win. Yeah, it's, it, there is a lot of psychology involved in this, this kind of encounters. Maybe 97 here for, for Black. Yeah, that 97 is. The... But hang on, takes, takes, takes. Uh, Ah, you want to take first on a1 or how? Because can I take? Queen takes? Rook takes a8 and queen e4. Ah. But okay, I'm giving some activity. I don't know exactly. Yeah, maybe rook e8. Yeah, rook e8, d takes e5. Yeah, but maybe this one isn't so clear. Just for a moment. What's... Is it possible to play... I was wondering about queen d2, but... Hmm. Yeah, queen d2, then queen c6 might come, yeah? Can I disturb you like this? I think you can. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Okay, so still not so clear, actually. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it's little bit unpleasant. Yeah. By the way, can we go to ding against Carson because something extraordinary happened there? Definitely. Oh, <laughs> It looks, yeah, actually, it looks we, like we, the variation we had. <laughs> what? This is mad. How does wow. Magnus look? Yeah, but you know, I mean, it's clear that Magnus did because he spent a lot of time. He was probably just not happy and he maybe went very deep in his calculation and felt like, you know, there will be, there will be something in this position. King f8 takes, takes. Because after all, white's position, yes, white won a clear exchange, but black has lovely pieces. And, and maybe actually the, the big question is how deep is Dingley's preparation? This we will, of course, not know un, until we interview him or if we get this message from him. But maybe actually this H4, H5 plan is something of still of an importance, yeah, which can also be easily missed by black. H4, bishop, d7, h5, g5, knight, h3 on the board. And our engine by at least does not believe in enough compensation. I mean, humanly speaking, I'm also very tempted maybe just to take on HC and push G4, you know, and if I would not see evaluation and I would think about Tigran Petrosian's games, I would claim that, you know what, I mean, I have incredible fortress, I can never be worse, but we know exactly that nowadays with computers, uh, th things are different. Mm, I don't know about that because, you know, white... It feels too static for black, and, and white can can switch over to the queen side. Yeah, that is this weakness on b7. Yeah, also some look a3, look b3. Doesn't coming. It doesn't, yeah, doesn't Magnus goes right. g4 immediately. No, I was just saying that humanly speaking. Yeah, course, yeah, yeah no, that, I understand. Yeah, g4 played. Oh, 
okay, well, let me let me take it. I don't I don't I don't see another option really. But look at this. Ding Ding is taking his time. Ding is taking his time. I I wonder does he consider does he consider something like f4? It's it's still one of it's the candidate moves, but a little bit strange. Magnus still looks pretty cool. He doesn't look like he's you know throws thrown his toys out of the pram yet. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what we have been talking about, that humanly speaking, this position doesn't look so clear at all. And if we would be not seeing this evolution engine bar, then we would be saying that, okay, there is so much to play for. Black has, look at this wonderful knight on e5. We are talking about the dark squared bishop. White has not castled. I mean, white's pawn structure is, is compromised. There are so many arguments that I could actually be giving for black, why black has very decent compensation. I only find it difficult now to, to try to sell this because uh, the devolution bar says that white is clearly better. But uh, this is a practical game. I mean, Magnus is not unhappy at all. I mean, he knows that if he plays against a computer, then uh, probably this is not enough. But in a human battle, anything can happen. Actually, hang on. After FG4, can, can black play a move like bishop e3? Wow. Just making sure that you will not castle or it's too much. Probably too much. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the bishop can sit on d4 if it's pushed with, with rook a3, then, then bishop d4. Yeah, but maybe you can just ignore and push g5 and it's very important that you get access to g5 and then go knight f4. But f takes g4, knight g4 and yeah, of course, fg4, knight g4, of course, it's, it's the natural move. I, you know, the, the line we discussed, yeah, because, okay, it's an intriguing position that F4 was an interesting choice, but how do you evaluate G takes H3, F takes E5, probably D takes E5, G4, G4. that was the idea. I was just looking at this. And then you go F5, for example. For example, you go F5 and... Uh, rook H3. Rook H3, FG4 and Rook B3, yeah? Rook B3, exactly. Yeah. And then, okay, try to try to evaluate. Ah, and you can't play long castle because the king already castled. Mm -hmm. Ah, very important. Yeah. But still, very complex. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's very intriguing. But okay, we have different position. Fg, knight, g4 on the board. And how should white... Well, uh, maybe, maybe rook a3 anyway here. Coordinate. Rook a3, yeah? You yeah. want to do... Okay, rook a3. Yeah, the big big question is that because after rook b3, I will have b5. Yeah, it's the big question that should I then move the knight first back? Not not that it's, but also I don't want, I mean, I would love to play a move like king e7, to be honest. I Yeah, I was actually looking at knight e3 in that position instead of king e7, but anyway. Yeah, knight is, knight is also tempting. I mean, my my first instinct would be actually from white side to go knight f4, or, yeah, knight f4, or even maybe take on g4 and then go knight f4. But, I mean, any case, none of these choices are easy, and I'm, I'm not feeling that one move is smiling more on me than any other. Interesting stuff. Can we, can we go to Hare Krishna against Rapport? Because... Exactly. It is really kicking off there. Well, bishop takes f2, check has just happened. How did, can we just rewind and see how we got there? Because it, it was uh, we were pretty deep into this game. Yeah, so we, we talked about this, the, all the nuances, everything, and the Laporte played the move g6, just a non-move, and knight fc. I'm not so happy from white side to go for the... Ah, but this was... This was the beautiful point of, of Laport. Knight c3, probably missed by Harry. Rook uh, c3, then rook e5. Queen c2, rook e5. Queen c3, rook e6. Rook d1. Bishop a5. b4 takes, takes. Bishop b6. And white is trying to fight for advantage. He goes bishop h6. And the last is bishop f2. Queen f2, queen b6 check. Ah, wow. Will we see a perpetual check? King g3, queen d6 check. Or even a rook takes a3. What is happening? Well, okay, but here bishop f4. Oh, no, rook, rook e3. Check. I beg your pardon. Yes. yes. Sorry. Let's just show this. Yeah. 
Wonderful. So King F2 on the board. And now the big question is, it seems like uh, Richie has a draw with, with Queen B6 check. Of course, you can never let White's King get back to G1. Yeah, that's why Black cannot give Rook F6. Then White just runs and, and is happy. And you have some Rook takes A3, but... Uh, with, with, the eighth, with the eighth rank, Black's king feels very shaky. Exactly. I so it, it would kind of be surprising if Richie went for rook a3. Uh, can we just check? So after queen b6, king f1. Then already rook f6 check. Rook f6, is that just winning? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's winning. Yeah, it's just winning. winning. Yeah. Uh, king f2, queen f2, mate. Yeah, that's, that's the end of that. Okay, right. And there is, there is a chance you can also give queen d4 check. I only don't really see what does it really change. Queen d4, king g3. Let, let's take a look here. Queen d4, king g3. Nothing much changes because, again, now you can't allow the king to, to run back to h2. You have to give this queen d6 check. Harry looks a bit tired. Inter I think, but he plays from Prague. Yeah, he's not playing from India. So also for, for players from India, like for Vidit, it, it might be already quite late, but nothing compared to the Chinese players. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here, unless there will be something, then uh, then we come back. But I think that the Magnus game is, is, is stealing the show now. Okay, let's go there. Yeah, knight, knight takes g4. Actually, Dingley then opted for this move, bishop g4, just getting rid of this knight because this knight is really irritating. Takes knight f4, king d7, king f2, and now bishop g7. This was exactly the position and king g2 played. This was the position that I had in front of my eyes and I wasn't really sure how to evaluate it. Okay, it feels good for white with knight on f4, protecting any kind of anti squares on the e, e, e file, but still, two bishops are two bishops. King G2. And um, okay, the knight on f4, I understand what you're saying that it covers e2, but actually it doesn't have really anywhere to go to. Um, well, I would claim that if it could even go somewhere, then we would be talking about serious advantage. Yeah, bishop f5, okay, hinting at bishop e4 and also taking away the b1 square. So now I've already bishop takes b2. But bishop b2, I will anyway be happy to sacrifice this exchange with rook b1 and, and hit on b7. Yeah, the, the pawn on h5 is uh, such, a, such a monster, actually. Yes, um, can, I, can we just play king f3 then? Yeah, why not? No, I mean, I think, think you're absolutely right. Let, let's... Let's just show that actually what happens on bishop takes b2 and, and rook b1 because suddenly, you know, getting rid of one of those bishops and breaking through, then white's position looks very pleasant with the pawn on h5. Yeah, I mean, now uh, black's look is completely out of the game. It looks like, okay, luckily, thanks to this, this powerful bishop, black is not lost yet, but it, it looks uh, okay. But maybe this, maybe this c pawn can. Create counterplay if, if the pawn on h5 can be under control. It might not be as bad as it looks. Yeah, true. Hmm. Okay, but then it's then it's a really, really tricky spot for, for Ding because I felt like if white can play king fc and be able to meet bishop b2 with rook b1, then it might be, you know, just like a beautiful way of... Uh, um, stabilizing the advantage but but if we are dealing now with bishop e4 check and bishop b2 together then it's not easy to find a stabilizing way king fc on the board okay yeah this is we might be seeing this line and look b1 takes takes bishop e5 correct it it's very important to go ah no bishop e5 is not yet played it's not not yet Rook B1, because for me, bishop D4, bishop E5, there is even some argument for bishop G7 to stop H6, but uh, but then I was afraid to be pinned on the seventh. Yeah, maybe some knight. Let's just show this. B yeah. Bishop G7, the line that kind of I think irritated both of us that maybe there are ideas like knight E6. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and F E6, look G7, and then suddenly this pass pawn looks too 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 much, too much. Yeah. yeah. Um. But that it actually is such an interesting position after, well, let's let's go with, yeah, bishop b5 played. Um, you know, 
white has, of course, has other options here. And, and uh, you know, maybe trying to break through with um, trying to spin that knight round somewhere. So, you know, I'm looking at maybe getting the knight to uh, maybe knight g2 to come to e3. Uh, and then, obviously, if, if we could blockade on c4, it would be fantastic. But also looking at knight f5 as well. Can, it, can we... I mean, knight g2 is c4 just just too much. Oh, he's played g4. Okay. G4, yeah. He wants to go g5, g6, and get access to the e6 square. Yeah, also for the knight. But yeah, the big question will okay, c4. c4 can be met by rook c7 for the moment. And then c3. And then it, it doesn't really move anywhere. Yeah. I mean, c4, rook c7, cc. I feel like now white can then really continue his plan maybe with g5. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably G4. important that after king d8, if if we can take on f7 or not, it might be important. Yeah, I mean, worst case, you can play rook c6 as well. But anyway, yeah, rook, if rook f7 works, then... Yeah, because c2 then, then check seems to work. Of course, you can still take on f4. It, the line is not, not over yet. It's very tricky because maybe this pawn queens and I'm losing already. Hmm. It's very, very... Okay, I'm not losing because I can give Rook F8 check, but uh, it no, might no, no, be a but, draw. No, no, but it, play Rook takes F4 in that position. Rook takes F4, I think... Oh, rook C8? No, sorry, sorry. I mean, C2 no, no, and no, Rook C, C8. C2 is the move. C2 is yeah. the move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, this was the line that... Yeah, but I, I felt like, you know, this, this still draws with Rook F8 check, but uh, of course, uh, because then King D7 and Rook F7 is kind of a perpetual check. You cannot move to e8 because then I can take on f1 and I will have rook e4, rook e1. But okay, it's uh, no need for this from white side, of course. g4. Mm, really tricky. So Magnus has, has a very difficult task here. Yeah, rook c8. He plays rook c8, but this is not really the question. Does he have time? g5 blitzed out. I, I was worried that he might not be in time. But okay, there are also ideas like you can take and then push and then what, what exactly will happen? Maybe let, let's take a look, yeah? What happens yep. after, for example, just the simplest question first. Takes, takes, takes. Then, then h6. Probably h6. But king f8. Yeah, now g6. Now g6 and, and, and it should win, yeah. And g6, yeah, h7. g7 wins and other, yeah. These, these are the dangers that whenever you give up the bishop, the, these pawns are just too fast. So it means that you should, you should not give it, but okay, then you have to start with c4. Okay, so c4, let's, let's try again. So g6. Yeah, c4, g6. Now what happens on, can, can it, well... White threatens to take on f7. So take on g6. Yeah, take on g6. Yeah, c4 on the board. We, we might be seeing this line. Okay, big moment. Yeah, that do, do we go h6 now? But no, h6 c3 doesn't work. No, I'm, I'm no, of course, you have to take g 6 c3. Because bishop f4 g7 wins. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. Yeah, c3. And now can we. Combine. I mean, now I go g7. I'm I'm winning, no? Because you have to sacrifice, and oh, then you, I will have. But you've 92. got 93 at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let just show this till yeah. the end, and then the knight covers from e2 or from d3. So yeah, yeah fg6 on the board, and after g 6 will be the question because after g 6 bishop takes f4, g7 seems to win on the spot. And and then the yeah eight g six on the board and now the big question then maybe you have to play king f eight maybe you have to play yeah king f eight on the board very very nice defense by Magnus yeah king f eight thanks to the bishop there will not be any mating attack and then he relies on this pawn wow maybe he's got just enough just enough. Well, still, there will be a question like 96 check, king g8, rook c7. And, rook c7. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at this end game. <laughs> yeah. Might be still very, very unpleasant, yeah? Let's find out. Because, okay, you have to trade. 
trade, and uh, luckily now the king is covering the c-pawn. A5? Yeah, A5, and... Yeah, knight e6 check on the board. Now, anyway, we will come first back with the knight to e6, of course. Yeah, locking down the king. Then, okay, I will come closer to this pawn, and then I try maybe some knight d8, knight c6. Uh, we, we have seen the Thank magic you. from Magnus in the previous game against Eric Hans and with the knight versus bishop. Mm. I mean, uh, this also has the tendency, this pawn structure, that the knight might outrule the bishop. Very interesting. So Ding is actually contemplating that endgame now. Because that's the position on the board with King G8. And the, the players have time. Four minutes against six minutes. I also feel that it's very tempting because you know exactly that from white side you are perfectly safe, yeah? Yes. This is this is also very, very... But, but okay, who knows? If Dink has incredible nerves, he can maybe even think about... But, but I can't believe. I mean, King E2, C3, who can have nerves like this? King D1, C2, King C1. Ooh. Can... Can, can you ever imagine somebody playing? Because I have this look C7 idea still in the pocket. But it's, it's too scary. <laughs> too, too scary for us. Yes. <laughs> um, let's, let's, listen, let, let's just have a very quick look at some other boards. We've got Lei, uh, Lei Kuang Yem against and, uh, David Anton, which looks like there's a um, significant advantage for White. Wow, wow. I mean, it looks looks winning. And and Lekwang Liam is on fire today. Now, not only knight f7, but knight g6. Ag, look h4. That's the real threat, giving checkmate. But, of course, after bishop takes f3, then knight f7 will win. Because after bishop f7, then bishop would cover on h5. But this case, the, the back rank is a, is a problem. There we go. That's... Yeah, it, it seems to be over. That looks pretty good. And uh looks like Garwin is struggling again. Can we a quick look at Hans Niemann? But again? no, just a second. Breaking news. I mean, Dingley then has nerves of steel. He opts for King E2. Wow. Incredible. I mean, we will be coming. So we can now jump to Gavin. I just wanted to highlight that the yeah, amazing Ding goes for King E2. 5, 5 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. Chinese time. And Gavin Jones, what is this endgame? Wow, but Hans Hans Niemann is on fire. Yeah, look at this. I mean, this G pawn and the H pawn should should actually win the game. Looks looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Time time to go back to the Magnus's game. I mean, this this, this for British fans, I think uh, the the nerves are collapsing. Yeah, looks looks pretty serious. Yeah, but oh, King E two now. All China China's eyes in are on this game because okay, the Dingley then has. All the chances of beating the champion. And uh, basically, Magnus is in a kind of box. Yeah, it looks like the C-pawn is, is fantastic, but it's getting blocked just in time. And there is no way of, of giving any check. You can't activate the rook. The pawn is hanging plus. You have to watch out for the back rank mate with rook b8. Total control, total domination with knight on e6. And then rook c7 will come. And then white probably will win the a6 and the c2 pawns as well. Magnus needs some magic. Hmm. But is there magic here? Because now white is also, yeah, CC king d1 on the board. White is threatening king c2, so you feel like, but at least on CC the pawn is protected by the bishop. Yeah, but, I was going to say, oh, but the, yeah, the problem is there's a back rank. So actually the rook on c8 can't activate. Yes. So, I mean, black is... Very short of moves. And you know, there is one funny idea that you can try to target with king h8, rook g8 the pawn, but it runs into rook h7 checkmate. So it, it does not work yet to, to create counterplay like this. Okay, this is looking pretty miserable for Magnus. It looks like a great game by Ding. Absolutely. Uh, amazing game. I mean, judging that this g4, g5, g6 will be in time, giving all this counterplay, wow, it's, it's super high class. Yeah, A5 on the board. Look at this. Uh, engine bar goes completely crazy, but okay, what to do? What to do? A5, King C2, Rook A8 on the board. So Magnus has just gone completely passive here. Well, but he, he says like, you know what? Uh, how, do you, how do you checkmate me? And if you go Rook C7, I'm going to get counterplay with Rook B8. So it's uh, this, this computer oh. is fooling everyone. Do you know what? Maybe he goes... Rook B1, 
and G7 and puts the rook on F1 or, or, yeah. or H1. Yeah, this Maybe is that's the way to do it. But okay. Okay, if we start, start okay, let, let's see it. So rook b1, b1. I, I have to make a pass, yeah? Yeah, and now, now g7. Now g7. Yeah, Actually, I mean, it's just a winning, isn't it? I'm There's... in a total box. Yeah, I, I kind There's... of have to There's... wait, yeah? Okay, no, I can go king f... No, I can't. No, 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 rook okay, f1. Okay, I have to go rook a8. Okay, I'm okay, waiting. Okay, rook, rook f1. Game. Yeah, rook f1. I have to take on g7. Okay, so rook g1. Rook g1, rook a7. I have to play, and then this pawn end game is it? Is it winning for you? Yeah, that's a good question. Take, take, take. Okay, let's take a look at this. Yeah, it's winning for white. It looks the the. the... But no, I mean oh, no. no the king, is, king is in time. I'm taking first. Yeah. Oh so, no, this is. No, that's in time. Okay, that's. Yeah, but but I mean, okay, one has the feeling that yeah, yeah, he is playing rook b5, bishop e5, rook b6. There might also be some tsukzwang. Rook b7, and now it's black to move. Yeah, exactly. This is this is very, very nasty and very fine play by there is just no reason to hurry. Please make another move. Now rook c8 will be met by rook a7. Yeah, he just wants to collect. Okay, so so if king h8, well, if king h8, then yeah, funny, funny, funny. Yeah, king h8, still, still and not so easy to crack. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why Magnus is trying to hang on. But okay, he's hanging on with bishop f6. It's basically the same. I mean. He, he says, like, okay, show me the winning plan. Yeah. Do you have a winning plan? I mean, the, the line that you mentioned with this rugby and then G7 is exactly what I'm also uh, were thinking immediately that, okay, if it's an element of win, it's an element of him. But if this pawn endgame turns out to be a draw, that, that's kind of a problem. That is a problem. <laughs> that's a huge problem. It's one tempo, one tempo. Yeah, look c7, of course, correct. Okay, bishop e5 will be played anyway. So it all comes down to to this uh, to 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 stand, I mean Tsukzwang, bishop e5, king d3, but you have this king h we have to find the way also how to okay, bishop f6. So Magnus just wants to go bishop. Wow, and, and Ding activates the king. So what he wants to Go king f5, g7, king g6, rook f7, rook f8. Can he really do this? Does he have time? Let's find out. Yeah, maybe he can. Yeah, king f5. Yeah, rook, rook on c7 is so incredible because b file is not important. You can't move because of checkmate. And uh, wow, and look at Magnus. Yeah, if, if you just look at him, it's enough to know that he knows that that's it. Ding, find the right plan. King g5. And he goes king h6, g7, and like this, not to give g7, king h7 chance. Very, very nice. Let, let's highlight this, that if white pushes g7, then black actually has king h7 defense. So then goes king g5, and, and nothing moves. Yeah, rook a8, and now king h6. Classy. Very classy. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, it's really, it's such a game that you feel like if, if it ends... You, you have to upload the winner because it, it was just unbelievable. Totally, yeah. No, I mean, Ding, Ding's on fire. and This, this is a, a fantastic game. Brilliant. No, listen, I, I tell you what, I'm really pleased for him because, you know, Ding has had a very unfortunate time in these online events. That He's playing at the wrong time of day. Well, he's playing at night and it's really, really difficult for him and, and he hasn't had a lot of luck in these tournaments. So, you know, I, I'm really pleased if he has a good result here. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the reason why I did not mention this because I have already said it in the previous show that, yes, I'm, I'm definitely rooting for Ding and also not only because of the online events, but all this COVID situation and everything. Now he missed out on the whole Grand Prix series as, as one of the best players in the world. Definitely. I mean, uh, the whole world is thinking like, how can he somehow get into the candidates tournament? 
it's really heartbreaking what what we see what's happening with Ding and if he plays such an amazing game then then we are just so happy for him yeah well it's yeah it looks like he has comprehensively outplayed the world champion well first of all it started with incredible preparation yeah this bishop c4 bishop e2 and and this is uh, yeah and magnus designs incredible i mean let's let's upload Ding's uh, performance this was really yeah. really amazing brilliant absolutely brilliant so he's resigned there so yes king g as you pointed out with the arrow, arrows king g6 and rook f7 rook f8 fantastic absolutely brilliant uh let's go to uh can we go to duda against lei ting jie because we could be uh, getting a bit of an upset there yeah the position is very very sharp with black having an incredible bishop on e5 weak king on a2 but of course black has to make sure to mate white because because okay white has his wow and f3 played what does it mean so after rook f3 takes takes queen d2 king b3 is there a checkmate or not yeah that's the very first thing that we have to understand what yeah. are both players down to 20 seconds sorry then i don't have the time to to make those moves but let's just think about takes 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 queen d2 check Looks yeah we're like gonna see this king yeah, b3 but... queen b2 check king a4 and that is the question is there a mate or not i don't see it but you can play a6 in that position but then queen f8 check and queen c5 check just in time oh yes I mean, even then, after Queen C5 check, you still have B6, but I go Queen E7 check and might hold. Mm, yeah. Yeah, down, down to 13 seconds. Okay, Tingji is also 5 a.m., almost 5 a.m. Very, very difficult to concentrate, I guess. And she goes Queen D6. No, I, I don't like this. Losing the momentum. I mean, if this was the plan, then... Somehow this F C was maybe premature. I think she she missed that. Um, she obviously thought that was going to be decisive, but yeah, that's a terrible compromise. Yeah, but I mean, still, I, I feel like you know, if if you go Queen B two check, King A four A six because the Queen protects the Bishop. I mean, okay, White will give a perpetual check, but that's that's not not a real problem, no. no I mean, absolutely. we are starting with B five. By the way, I think there was a, another draw in the position. If you, in, after queen b2, king a4, I think you could play b5 check. Bishop takes b5, queen d4 check, and I think that's a draw. Yeah. Straight straight away, actually. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, but uh, that's why this, this queen d6 slightly mysterious, but maybe she feels like anyway there is perpetual or if, if white tries to run out, then white will lose the g5 pawn. Yeah, now with queen b2 check. So maybe. King F1 runs into Queen C1. Maybe White has to come back with King D1. Oh, okay, that's that's how she's doing it. Right. Yeah, that's important. That is, Peter, do you want to just... Maybe there's not enough time to show it, but that's really important that the bishop is loose. Which one? Uh, well, if King F1, then Queen Ah, C1. yes, of course. Yeah, no, of yeah, course. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's crucial. Otherwise, the, the king... No, is but anyway, he goes King F1, Queen wow. C1. Because then the, the two... And she takes the C4 bishop. Okay, okay. Because Queen G5 would be the... Uh, so Duda is gambling big. Wow. Yeah, but I can't believe this is kind of a serious winning attempt. Um, he's really, he's really the pushing. Because five is so strong, I, I can't. It, it would be it's hard, it's hard to imagine that those pawns are actually going to move through. But let's yeah, see. Yeah, they don't. They don't really move for, but okay. You also have to watch out for some queen f8 check. How to proceed? I mean, I still feel like white is actually not risking anything. That's why I felt like maybe when just take on g5, it's it's safe. But okay, taking a piece is very natural. Very natural. Yeah, well, what what kind of move do we do we play? Yeah, because you also it feels like black should try to yeah a6 is played. It it was my natural instinct as well. I wanted to play the move a6, and maybe just to give up on any winning attempt. I mean, just to be ready if white wants to give perpetual check, let, let it be. With with queen f8, queen c5. Okay, let's see how far does 
Let's do the gamble here. Exactly. This is now a very, very critical moment. Yeah, A4. Okay, he, he wants to keep some tension. He, he wants to just put the pawn on A5, create the box. So he has a perpetual if, if needs be. Dramatic, dramatic. Yeah, down to 50, yeah, 26 seconds. King A8. Of course, the, the problem for White is that, yeah, he has everything at its maximum. He cannot really improve the position because he needs to guard the E4 pawn. He cannot let Black Queen grab the E4 pawn because then White's king will be compromised. Yeah, Queen F8 check. King A7. I mean, okay, Duda is known to be willing to take extreme risk, but uh, how to do it here? Queen C5, King B8. And now Duda is down to 15 seconds and Ting Jie back to 42. I mean, uh, it would be insane, but okay. I have seen Duda, you know, with few seconds on the clock, uh, refusing repetition and trying to, but no, here, here, this is, yeah, it has to be a duel. Let's see. You're right. I mean, he is incredible, sometimes an incredible gambler. He sometimes really goes for it. He's thinking about it. He's <laughs> yeah. Imagine if he plays now the move queen e three, just the pass move. Yeah, because again protects everything against his own king and let the game progress. No, finally it's uh, yeah okay. Okay. Uh, after <laughs> after the Duda is a human being. Very nice to to see this. Uh, so I think well, we have two games going. We have Eric Hansen against David Navarra. Let's let's go there. Wow, wow, of course we have to come here. Look at this. This is the pawns. B pawn is also queening. I mean, what is that? Yeah, you have to give the checks. Rook d6. Ah, king c6, rook c6 check and rook c8. That's my black king cannot, cannot go to c3. Oh, Very important. Oh. And then king e4, rook e6 check is, is a drawish mechanism. So is that a draw? That's that's an incredible draw because, you know, you think with, with pass pawns on the sixth rank, you just think, well, this is... This is winning, but that's that's an extraordinary drawing technique. Can we just show that actually? Yeah, because King C3 really? runs into Rook C6 check and the King moves somewhere, doesn't matter. White already has looks and what? What? Uh, David Navarra goes King C4 and the last Rook C6 check, King D5 and now Rook C8 seemingly wins. Okay, he wants to go D2, but uh, this is this, this this is not working because there is King G5. Yeah, in this line, D2, look at oh, no D1, checks. King, G5, no checks, and B8, Queen is coming. Oh, this is extraordinary. So, so the game has completely flipped around. And King, G5, no checks, and White wins. Incredible. Wow. If we go back a few moves, I have a funny feeling that... Uh, well, yeah, and look at look at David. Look at David. Oh my god! Yeah, this is this, this is an incredible moment. Yeah, he just noticed that King G five is possible, trying to win in a position where he should have just uh, probably he was winning before. I we, we don't know he exactly. Must, yeah, I mean maybe we could look at that. He might well have been winning before, but yeah, poor guy. Yeah, and now uh, E two, and it's it's and it's clear that. Black king will be mated first. It's no matter if uh, black has two queens or not. This is this is checkmate with the queen and the rook. Yeah, queen d2 check first. King h5, just hiding from the checks. And once you push e1, then you start mating with the queen and rook. Yeah, poor guy. That's really, really tough. Yeah, but uh, I mean, usually you can blunder these things with few seconds on the clock. However, he he hurried. He blundered it with some thirty seconds on the clock. I mean, he he should have he should have paid more attention. He was maybe too confident. Don't know. I mean, now, now really, it feels like yeah, you just come with the the queen and the rook, and it's it's just impossible to to escape. This is still, the still got to find a way through to the checkmate, actually. Yeah, but uh, how do you play now after queen b5? It's very, very unpleasant to, to find the square. 
Okay, I'm going to pick something at random. Okay, King King D4. I don't know. Yeah, but also don't forget that actually the pawn end game is completely winning for me. Yeah, so yeah, oh, King D4, okay. Rook, Rook D8 check, and okay, it's gonna be a uh, yeah, it's it's just yeah. over. That's yeah, maybe that's the important point actually. Yeah, that's important. No, but I think there should also be some mate. I mean, King C3. Okay, yeah, King E4 is running to this direction, but okay, it just doesn't doesn't matter. You just can't escape this. Queen C4 check. Yeah, looks good enough to finish it off. Yeah, on the board. Just there is nowhere to hide, and and pawn ending is also completely lost. Yeah, now rookie eight check, and after I will take queen takes h four check and trade the queens. I mean, yeah, I yeah. don't don't need mate. Yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah. Wow, uh, we've got another game going. Ju and Jun against Jordan van Forest. Ah, okay, but uh, yeah, let's let's stick till the very end here. It, it's quite a drawish end game there. As I see, we are not missing out on anything. And now Queen takes H4 and, and game is over, basically. Yeah. On the board. And I think, okay, now, now, now we can move because there is nothing yeah. left than the designation. Queen D5 is met by Queen G5 check. And that's it. Heartbreaking loss for, for David and a completely unnecessary loss. Yeah, because okay, we don't know what happened before. Probably he was so angry and he was so upset that he, he missed something before that he felt that he needs to play for a win and blundered. Yeah, that's game over. Okay, let's look at the one remaining game. <laughs> if you remember, we were looking at a position where White was trying to squeeze that backward C pawn, and it looks like that uh, Zhu Wenjun did indeed manage to win a pawn on the queen side. However, Jordan has managed to achieve a three versus two rook and pawn end game, which should be a draw. I don't see how you get through for White at all, actually. Yeah, it's it's a dead draw. I mean, there are no breaks. The rook is protecting on the seventh rank, and and then you can start checking whenever White's rook moves. Yeah, so I'm expecting the move rook e7. I actually see no okay. winning chances for White whatsoever. Yeah, no, ab absolutely not. So we can also make a tour of of results just to have a feeling that I can tell you the results I'm seeing here. So Hans Niemann beat Gavin Jones. So Hans is on fire. Lekwang Liam beat David Anton, also Lekwangliam on fire. Uh, the Indian duel between Vidit and Praga, Praga ended in a draw. This game is still in progress. Uh, Duda uh, Lighting GA was a dramatic game which ended in a draw. Uh, Hari Krishna Rapport draw. Dingley then has won this amazing game against Magnus Carlsen. And Eric Hansen has beaten David Navarro. So very, very bloody round again. And we only have this Already very lowish position in progress. Yeah, this this could this could run. I mean, okay, the only thing I can think of for White is to play the king down the board, um, but then checks will occur. Yeah, and and can't, you can't really give up the G four pawn for an active king. There, there is just no idea there. That's also a problem. Well, uh, hmm, that that would still be perhaps something because, okay, let, let's for example, if I put the king on d six and and rook takes g four. Yeah, but I mean, after king e four, I'm I'm already giving a check, so you only can have king on d five. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. So now I, I for example, just rook collect seven. Rook e seven. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, sorry, but I mean, here after king d, I just keep on checking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I just came with, with the rook on e6. Yeah, if, if you move the rook to b6, it, it might be a different story. But yeah, I mean, I to, to be honest, you know, I, I always had this position in mind with the king on f7. I did not see any reason why why you would then move the king to g7. Yeah, king e4, rook a4 check 
is on the board and I felt like king d5, rook g4 with, with king on f7. That's why I blundered rook e7 check, yeah? And that, that in my mind already I had, had it there. Yeah, we should just explain that it, 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 it can allow the, the king into e6. But yeah, well, after king f8, not in this, not in this position. Move. Not in this position. Yeah, rook yeah, h7. You, you move the rook and then king e6, and yeah. at least we know that this is looking very dangerous and there is no reason to allow this. So after king d5, I'm expecting rook a5 check to happen. But why on the, why on earth do you put your king on g7 by yourself? Yeah, it was it was this position. You remember, I automatically moved the rook to to a7 already, and then the move king. G I can only explain that maybe somewhere you then was seeing some goes with g5, a g5, a6, and then some king g4, king h5 break. But I mean, very hard to imagine that this is really a threat. But maybe that was the reason. Usually there is always an explanation like this, yeah, that they, they see some dangers there. And then, okay, anyway, the position is dead low, so I will stop G5. That's that's the justification. Probably. But, but as you say, I mean, where's, where's this king go? I mean, if black plays king F7 here. Yeah, it, it goes nowhere, yeah, basically it's just. And after king F7, then you can come back and take the G pawn. But king F7, I go rook D6. Ah, okay. I go rook d6. No, that's true. Okay, then better to, better you to give You can give check. a check again, yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll give a check. You can give a check and the big question, okay, if, if I already go to b7, then okay, you, you just go rook a4 and the king is too far away, no matter if we give a check or not, I guess. It doesn't look dangerous. Yeah, rook a6 check on the board. I think we're about to find out. But maybe white will play the move king b5. Yeah, king b5. And then if rook a7, then something like rook c6. And then with the idea king b6, rook c7, it's a little bit... I mean, at least there is some intrigue suddenly in the position. It should be nevertheless a complete draw because when the king is so far away, then you can allow a rook c7 check. You move the king back and you target the g4 pawn. I guess it still holds. But uh, it gave a little bit of, of a chance for white. I mean, at least some hope. Yeah, let's maybe not a chance, but some hope. Yeah. Rook a7, rook b6, correct. Yeah, now king c6. Uh, she's, she's trying to come with king c6. So uh, actually, rook b6 was, was kind of clever that opening up the way for the king, setting rook b7, and also the king marching faster towards, but probably does not matter at all. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, she has... Ju uh, and Jun has succeeded in creating some interest in the position. Well, I, I feel like it was... I mean, it was your dance contribution, yeah? Because just this one little innocent King G7 move allowed all this King Marsh. Otherwise, we, we would be not even talking about this. Yeah, Rook C7. Okay, Black has to sit tight. Yeah, stopping King C6. Yeah, rook c6 now. And rook c6, okay, rook moves back to a7. So yeah, we are expecting rook c6, rook moves back to a7. Or maybe it's not the moment to give rook b7 check and king c5, king f7, just to try to, to get this king. No, okay, rook a7, systematic. This is systematic. That's nice. Yeah, and, and, very and nice. Now, and now move the king in. Yeah, rook d7. No matter, king c6. Mm, still, Oops. still a few questions. One can still push. Yeah, definitely. I mean, okay, now, now white is seriously pushing. I mean, even if it's a dead draw, but you, you at least know that you are playing for something, yeah? This is always very, very important psychologically that you know that you are not just fooling around, but you, you have some yeah, something to... Rook across, maybe? Yeah, king c5. Also fine play, because if you move the rook, then anyway, white would... I mean, black would probably start giving checks. So king c5 now, white wants to go rook d4. But okay, rook d4, rook c1. Yeah, finally, okay. Now, oops, now, now this king on f7 has, has reached its, 
it's rightly rightly placed there. So rook c1, king d6, and okay, now rook a1. Of course, I would have preferred to have king on f7 with white king on fc, but even here it should still be enough. I don't know what, what to do. Yeah, king d5. Rook a5 there, but now white is a little bit giving up on the momentum. King c6. Rook a6 check. Do you see some ideas or? No, not really. I mean, just shuffling really. Yeah, I mean, at least uh, now white might get a chance to give a check and force the black king on the eighth rank, but uh, it's only a moral victory because it will not lead to anything tangible. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, here, if, if I want to make sure that I give a check, I could have gone to b7, but it already indicates that she knows that this is probably nothing. Okay, rook moves, check, um, king moves back to g8, protecting the h6 pawn and... Yeah, bring the king. And okay, this is this is what I was kind of expecting. I mean, why we, we didn't see this? Okay, she went king b5, we might be still seeing this. Okay, one. Yeah, rook d7 check, and then we, we might be seeing this. Yeah. It's a long night, folks. Final game. And it's very, just while this one is playing out, it's very interesting to see the, the players at the, at the top of, of the leaderboard, you know, after these first four rounds. So we have Hans Niemann. We have Lei Kwang Liem. We have on 10 out of 12. We have Ding on 9 out of 12. And Vidit on 8 out of 12. And Magnus Carlsen, 7 out of 12. Uh, that's, that's quite a surprise. Yeah, but with this three-point system, uh, things, things can escalate. And yeah, Magnus just lost a big game to Ding, and it's already um, already it, it hurts his uh, tournament standing. But but it's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, not not yet. No, but still. But Hans Niemann, you know, maybe he's he's kind of the surprise, playing extremely well. Well, he's he's very dangerous. I mean, he's yeah. this I not. I mean, in the previous event. Yeah, he lost many games, but I mean, in his games, one could feel that, uh, yeah, it, he just lost the lost the control at some point and lost four or five games in the door. Otherwise, um, he, he was, wow, and look A4, but this is exactly the position that we have been talking about. And uh, this, this king D6, king moves to E6. I mean, at least practically speaking, this is dangerous. This is definitely dangerous. But rook d4, why? Why rook d4? I mean, normally I would say, like, no matter what, good or bad, you have to go king d6, no? But you know what? She can go around in circles a few times. Well, if she will get another chance, it's, it's I, the I don't know. Technique. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure if she will get another chance. You don't think so? It's not possible to force, force the, the king back any, at any time anyway. Well, probably, yeah, probably. But, I mean, just incredible. I mean, this is what people are saying always. Yeah, in end games, just pay attention to every small detail because the position is draw. I mean, white, black should have, and I'm pretty sure that Jordan is kicking himself like crazy that he allowed this king march all the way to, to the queen side because there was a chance that he, he just stops this. Yeah, so we are actually getting back to this position. Look, the check. King f7, rook d7, check king g8, and then king d6. And probably black will play. But how is black defending that position? I mean, maybe just hang on. So let's illustrate. So if, if king g8, what, what I'm talking about is that after king d6, is there a chance that black can try to survive something oh, like this? G7. I mean, it's uh, quite hard to believe, but who knows? Maybe. 
still no i i mean now rook d6 and rook a7 check king e6 and i'm setting rook d i mean it's the, i i don't believe that black can survive like this yeah now king d6 on the board okay all lies this is not super exciting and rook e1 is met by rook e7 so basically yeah rook, rook a6 check king e7 king g7 and now why are uh, rook Rook d6, you have rook a4 because rook f6, rook a7. Oh, this is rook d6, you can play rook a4. I'm, I'm not setting to take because of check. Oh, Incredible. oh. So even when white reaches the, the, the ideal position, gets the max, then it's still a draw. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like. Wow, but this is... This is, of course, yeah, and after rook d6, rook a4, black is not starting to take on g4, but I don't have a move. I mean, this is this is really the problem that I, I don't have a move. Incredible. And now both players down to under half a minute. How, uh, how close are we to the 50 move rule? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, who knows? Seriously. Who knows, actually? Legitimate, probably, hang on, F6, no, F5 was the... F5, F5. I, I don't see the move F5 where it, where uh, it comes. 82, move 82. Uh-huh, okay, move 82. Yeah, we're not so far off, actually. Yeah, not so far off. I mean, it almost feels like Rook Bishop versus Rook position, yeah? <laughs> it's played out so long. <laughs> Yeah, but actually, actually, it looks like there's there's no progress. Yeah, because this rook d6 idea is the key idea, but if if it brings nothing, that's that's of course a big shock. This means black should play now rook b6. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, rook b6, king c7, but now rook b4. Of course, already rook b4. But I can tell you, Jordan will be super, super relieved if, if he makes this draw. He will be very happy. I mean, on one side, frustrated that, uh, okay, he didn't got any chances, but at the same time, he should be very happy that he, he survives this. It was quite, quite scary. Very. And it did not look like, you know, he knew that the position is dead blue and he was comfortable and he was leaning back on his chair. He, he really felt the tension that, yeah, he has to pay attention and he still needs to. Yeah, uh, he's he switched to rookie four defense. Hyper concentration. Yeah, so now the idea is that after rookie seven, he goes rook back to a four, and king e six. Then he has rook a four check. This 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 is his defense. Yeah, rookie seven played, rook a four, and no way through. Oops, is seven. Yeah. Rook e4. So basically seven more moves. And by the way, do, do you think that the computer will automatically stop after 50 moves? Or I guess so, no? I would guess so. Uh, but I don't know. Perhaps our producer knows. <laughs> Yes, and we are getting the message from Tadeas, yeah, that computer stops. Yes, this is actually a big relief for, for the players that you don't have to calculate. You, you just focus on the game. Yeah, it seems sensible. But, it, but in any case, Jordan has found the, the drawing idea with this check from, from the side. Yeah, but still you are kind of, you, you feel like, okay, at some point the game should end. Yeah, and if White can play on forever, then, then of course it's very nice if computer just stops that enough is enough. Yeah. So rook e7, rook moves back to a1, and we are again back to this uh, tabia position. This is the, the holding, holding position. Yeah, rook e6, king f7. We, we might even get a threefold repetition before we get the move. <laughs> yeah. the Let's see. Draw. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, big, big, big battle. Finally, and, Jordan, Jordan saves the game and remains in a very good position. And, and that is actually the 50 move rule. Yes. Yeah. I think, in fact, it looks like Juwen Jun is a little bit confused because it happened automatically. Ah, uh, yeah, that why did it stop? Yeah, but yeah. I think that this is not a good moment when she knows already that anyway she had no chances. Yeah, that she tried everything what what could be possible done, and it did not succeed. So I think now it's yeah. it's easy. I mean, if you feel like exactly you made progress and then the computer, then you feel betrayed. Yeah, but like this is just just absolutely fine. Yeah, she looks a bit confused. Oh, poor her. Yeah. Pity. That's probably well. Anyway, let's we can we can wrap things up. So we've had our um, four rounds of today in the preliminary tournament. Remember that it's the top eight that will go through to the knockout phase. Uh, so it's a fifteen round all play all. And we have at the top Hans Niemann and Le Kuang Liem on 10 out of 12. Remember, three points for a win. Ding Liren, nine. Vidit, eight. Jordan von Forest, eight. So he's doing well. And Magnus, seven, etc. At the bottom, yeah, tough. Garwin Jones is at the bottom. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very tight event. Listen, thanks everyone for, for tuning in to this very special event, this Melt, Meltwater Champions Chess Tour Charity Cup. Remember, if you'd like to donate to the Play Magnus partner, that's UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, then, then please do. You, you'll find the links there. Chess24.com slash donate. And funds go to um, helping children in Ukraine. And it's a privilege to be involved in this event because of that. Um, Peter, what, what are your, what's your takeaway from, from today? What's your, what are your main thoughts? Well, we, we just see what tense battles we are witnessing. I mean, uh, there are players who, who started out very, very strongly. Yeah, it's uh, Hans Niemann had an incredible run, but also one really has to know, and we have noticed this in the previous uh, event already, that uh, good start is of course fantastic, but one should not draw any conclusions. I mean, it's so easy to make great comebacks with, with this three point system. Yeah, it just uh, if you get the flow and you start winning, just like Hans Niemann scored today the 10 points, that's uh, exactly how other guys can also cash in in the next, next days. Uh, keep the momentum going. I mean, th those guys who started well, they have to keep the, the momentum going. You can never just relax, and I'm of course, the highlight of the day from a chess perspective was, in my opinion, this, this Ding Lee and Magnus Carlsen incredible game. I mean, power performance by Ding starting from 4 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, he showed incredible will to fight. Yeah, he went for this more sharp thing. He showed great preparation. Magnus realized on, on his instinct he wanted to play for compensation. And Ding played with the computer's precision. I mean, Magnus basically faced the supercomputer, the machine, and, uh, and, uh, and Ding uh, absolutely convincingly also with this Kingi one, I mean, Kingi two blocking this C pawn and then finding this King March all the way back to the King side. Uh, for me, this was the, the true chess highlight of, of today. But of course, we have seen so much action uh, and we will still be seeing so much action in the next days. Absolutely. No, I, I agree. That, that was a fantastic technical performance, actually, from, from Ding. And, but also, it's just great to see such a varied lineup of players here, you know, young players, uh, players from all over the world. Uh, so we're going to have some great days ahead of us. And I hope everyone will join us tomorrow. Starts at 1800 hours Central European time. And uh, well, we'll see you all tomorrow. Peter, great to have your company. And I hope everyone will join us tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, Danny. Also, see you and tune, tune back tomorrow. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things.
Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app.